Well, welcome everybody. Uh, we've got Phil here with us. I just want to, before we get into this, um, initially we were trying to do this the official way and I think rightfully so. I, I went around on the internet trying to find like discussions with anti-cheat developers on the internet and it just doesn't exist. <laughs> and I think for good reason. So I, I think we're well aware of the sensitive They're nature of this. Probably trying to jobs. I don't understand. Why <laughs> yeah, and trying to be effective. It's kind of like having a job or, or, or having an interview with a detective about like how to catch murderers and like all the, the tricks and, you know, up your sleeve. You don't really want to like publicize that information to the bad guys because they're because they're watching. So when you're asking questions or you're listening to the discussion, just be aware that like there's just stuff that's off the table, right? Um, the other thing I want to go over real quick is we are not attacking Battleye. We're not attacking Riot Games. We're not attacking any company. The idea is to not pit them up against each other. Um, the goal, I think, of this discussion in my mind is I think people are severely uneducated about anti-cheat. And it's very aware to me now, after talking to uh, some of you guys um, in the that are in the know, um, how little information there is out there. Um, and I think as a consumer, it helps to know just a little bit so that you can be educated enough to know what's going on. And and, and that's kind of why we're doing this. Um, so I, I, uh, Phil, if you can uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about I yourself, can. what you do. No, I'm unable, I'm unable <laughs> to introduce myself. Right now. I'm under NDA. I'm under NDA. Um, yeah, I'm a, I guess I, I mean, I guess I'm an anti-cheat veteran. I've been in the anti-cheat industry like 50, and the cheat industry like 20 years. Um, I guess I got started making cheats um, forever ago on some Korean games, one of which was called Guns the Duel. I don't think any of you are old enough to remember that. Um, but yeah, that was the first game I hacked in. And then I ended up snagging a gig at Riot, you know, 10 years later. Um, working on the team that eventually became the team that developed Vanguard. I don't work there now, which is why I'm able to talk to you. Um, but I, I, uh, I, rec I, I recently left the team. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's probably the best good intro as any. I, I, I was originally a data scientist on the team, developing the pipelines that kind of like detect the anomalies that players you like behaviorally detect whether or not a person's cheating, but also like sometimes explicitly detect whether or not they're cheating. Um, and then eventually I led the team for two years before I sailed off into the sunset to tackle new things. Awesome, awesome. So I'm going to ask a few questions that are like the most basic ones, and then I want to go around. I want to pick uh, Veritas and OnePeg's um, brands. If you guys are from the Tarkov community, I don't think we need to introduce Ver like Veritas and OnePeg and myself. You guys know who we are um, if you've been on YouTube and Twitch. And um, so I'm just going to try to move, move things along. Um, okay, so <laughs> I have seen this comment so many times. Uh, if Battle Eye were, were, had, had kernel level and anti-cheat, everything would be detected. Um, if they just implemented that, uh, we, we would be able to detect all the cheats and, you know, like Battle Eye is crap, you know, they don't know what they're doing. Can you walk us through maybe some of the, the, the reasons why that may not be a very, uh, smart statement? Okay, well... I mean, if you already kind of prefaced this that I'm not going to be like comparing anti cheats. Like, it wouldn't be fair to do that either. Um, yeah. Also, there's like a lot. Um, this is all my personal opinion. I have to preface everything because this is just this is what I think. It doesn't represent the beliefs of any employer. Um, jargon out of the way. Um, well, there there is some merit in needing to be at the service level um, to reliably detect cheats. Uh, there's actually an article that like Riot released and I wrote that kind of like. Uh, it kind of explains why we need to have service level access in order to even have a shot. Um, and that's largely because like cheats themselves can install a service on your machine. They can hook the system calls that we intend to hook before we do and modify our requests to them and re modify the replies to those in ways that we would otherwise not be able to detect. Like we could, like at the very basic level, when we go to request, uh, you know, information on the machine from Windows, if their service, if they're operating at the service level, they're here being the cheat and we're operating at the user level, they're going to set hooks and then and, just, and just modify quick, the replies in a... What do you mean by service level? Break that down oh, for us. Kernel level, sorry. Kernel I'm, I'm level, referring yeah. to it as a service, but that's because there's a driver. It, yeah, it's it's the kernel level. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the... 
Right. So that I mean, that's honestly, this is pretty com- I, I don't want to say it's like common, but this is you, a Google search will reveal this stuff. Um, but yeah, it that's that's the difference. Is uh, well, that's why it's necessary, or at least that's why I feel it's necessary. Um, we in order to have any shot at getting a legitimate reply to a Windows API call, you kind of have to enforce the integrity. There's also a couple of other things, obviously, that the driver gives you. Uh, but the primary reason is to deter- make sure that none of that has been tampered with so we can trust the replies. It also makes, it just makes it easier on the developer to operate an anti-cheat. It makes it di- more difficult to perform subterfuge, all that good stuff. Okay. You said like 10 words that like literally make no sense to me. Um, <laughs> so, so, uh, 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 okay. So to just clarify it a little bit, um, I think you trumped this freaking GoPro. Uh, so to just clarify a little bit, uh, what do you mean by um like subterfuge um <laughs> clearing things uh all, all, all that kind of stuff. just 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 break it down a, a a little bit for us like what does kernel level mean what like what like what does it mean to be operating at that level just as like a basic like like starting place um yeah it's the least restrictive tier software can run at so it's it's often referred to as ring zero it's the kernel level of the operating system um there's not really another way for me to phrase it's it's like you know like you run all all the applications you run run in user mode um your your games i mean some of them request administrator privileges but they're still they're still in user mode you and the the calls that they I'll actually get into the calls later. So, like most of the applications you make to determine to to get any device information are making calls to an underlying Windows API from user mode. Um, like if I wanted to know what particular operating system you were running, um, what other applications, or even something as simple as like getting the process name by ID is a call that I make from user mode. I'm basically asking Windows to give me the answer to something. So I guess stepping into the next most common question, I'm just going to get these out of the way because these are the boring ones. I'm just going to fire these off. Everybody, if if you go and look at my YouTube comments when I ask questions for this and you go through forums, everybody uh, complains about the level of privacy infringement by anti-cheats. Uh, let's just go into that. Like, what is there any truth to that? Um, well, first, I should probably. I mean, this is important to say. Like, the kernel level doesn't. I mean, it does. It doesn't really let us. A lot of those calls we can still make from user mode and receive reply. Like, we can still get a list of like. You can still get a list of like uh, running processes. You could still get like all the things that like. All that can be done from user. Also, like a lot of the anti-cheat developers have been doing this for for years. Like they. They don't really need a driver to make requests of, of like to make requests of information from the system. There's like that the driver is more to it, it confirm the integrity of those requests. Not it has it doesn't have a whole lot to do with um, allowing us to gain a greater deal. There are some things that allows you to have a greater man. It's difficult to talk because you, you don't know what you can and can't say. But there are some things that it might give you like a small greater amount of detail on. But that's not really the purpose of why so many of them want or like why we found the driver to be necessary. It wasn't to increase the breadth of information we were getting. It was to ensure that that information hadn't been tampered with. Does that make sense? So, right. Uh, so, yeah, like it doesn't that's that's what it's kind of not there for. We're not gaining it. But to answer your question, that was mostly focused on the information that anti cheats retrieve. Like, and I'm mostly talking to my experience. We don't get like anti cheats. Don't give a. They need to collect some information, and usually those like what they collect and even the retention periods of what they collect are like defined based on the risk of that information. So like, but there's it's actually very little. There's most of it's deleted instantly. Well, not maybe some of it's retained so that you can have evidence of a particular cheat. But it's it's very rare that there's like anything that's like even personally identifiable stuff is so risky. Nobody wants to hold on to it. So like we didn't. Um, and yeah, I think Does that I, I hope that answers the question. It's difficult to talk about. Yeah, I think something that's related to this, too, is the idea that when when it comes to privacy. Some people are worried that, you know, like some foreign company that, that has a, you know, root level access is going to steal all my data, right? Um, and whether or not that has any merit, you know, obviously case by case basis. But then there's the idea that software having root level access could potentially be exploited to gain access, to gain root level access. Um, right, like the 
Like the Capcom driver, right? That's what you're asking about? I'm, I'm not talking about anything specifically, but just in general, um, one of the worries is that the... Um, th that essentially the, the software could be used as a vector for malicious software. Um, if that makes sure. sense, right? Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, right. So, like, if we, if we, I mean, first of all, I'm not speaking as a representative of any particular anti cheat. I mean, I'm going to say that every three sentences. No, it's fine. Um, but yeah, everybody does their due diligence to try to ensure that things like that can't happen. Um, I, I know that we went through pen tests, uh, internal and external, including external black box pen testing to determine if there were any vectors for that. We audited and audited again. Um, it it was like it. it and there's also like the, um, I mean, Riot themselves have a bug bounty program that, uh, again, there's articles that allude to this, but there's, uh, th that tries to encourage when vulnerabilities are found that, and some of them, like, you know, the payouts can get pretty big. Um, but yeah, we try to take that kind of thing seriously if every anti-cheat does. Um, I hope that's a good enough answer. <laughs> It, it there like there are some famous things where that happened by the way we're like like and you know for from us from the anti-cheat perspective we would identify those drivers and actually in some cases prevent them from loading um because we knew that those had been compromised and we would identify the cert associated with a driver and not allow it to load um and that was largely to make sure that somebody couldn't use that exploit to load uh to load ma to operate at the kernel level um so yeah, we're familiar with it, and we tried to, you know, everybody tries to do the due diligence to make sure it's not, um, it's like a number one concern since, well, it's become less of a priority as like more ways to check the integrity of services have, have been released by Windows, I guess I should say, but like, it, it was like our primary concern when I've been developing anti-cheats in the past, one of our top three concerns. Right on. So just walk me through, like, like you have no what idea this... how hard it is for me what? to talk yeah. about anti cheats, having made a few, and I can't talk about any of those. Anti -cheats. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> it, it's like tell me about the movie that you can't tell me the plot. Anybody who's in it, uh, anything that goes tough. on, where like, it takes that's, place. That's why, like, it's difficult. That's why. That's why <laughs> well, everybody okay. who has to do this says so, no because they can't really do it. If you can, like, generically, just walk me through, like, what is a normal day for an anti cheat developer? Uh, no, sure. If you're not in a management position, like, what are you, what are you doing on a day to day basis, just generically? I mean, it looks different at different studios. I, I don't think everybody does it exactly the same, but a lot of it, uh, I mean, layer one is like intelligence. So like we have reports of players that are cheating. A lot of those times, like sometimes it's like specific accounts organized by the frequency of reports they've received or a velocity of reports like over time. Usually looking at these accounts like behaviorally to determine if they are cheating. And then you're A-B testing to see if like the existing anti-cheat solution is detecting that, like whatever they're using. Um, and like, like this is if you're kind of on the ground floor, you know, we have right. so like once you get into the more mature anti cheats, they usually have like an anomaly detection pipeline that can like bubble up things, cases for review. Sometimes those are accounts and sometimes they're like reports that other that are like, you know, intelligence that has been gathered from the community, things that appear in unknown cheats for whatever reason. But, you know, like exploits that have been made available and then you're reviewing, you're just testing that against the existing anti cheat to confirm that it's detected. And if it isn't, then you prioritize a new detection method based on, I mean, that's the basic loop, based on the severity of that exploit. But like, it, how? I mean, just as often as a case actually fits into the carefully architected loop you have for review, there's one that like, just gets escalated extracurricularly and gets prioritized way more than, you know, whatever you considered the most relevant thing at the time. I think most product leads are pretty familiar with that process, but uh, yeah. The CEO shows up and is like, hey, this is number one now. It's like, you're right. It is. And it's like, it's some cheat you already detect, and it's just like some guy's kid is using it or something. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. That's kind of, and then, you know, like you go to lunch, and then you. <laughs> um, <laughs> right on it, boss. It's like, you know, you're, you're constantly modifying this thing. So, like, a lot of anti cheats are less, they, they're probably not even the same product. If you look in three month slices, enough of the code base has changed that it's, it's, you could almost call it a new thing, but it, it's changing constantly. It has to. Um, and so, a lot of anti cheats have kind of become less like a specific thing and more like a, a pipeline for delivering detections to, to, to clients running the games. 
um and often they're up updating like hourly like they have to that's kind of the nature so let's back out a little bit tell me like what do you think the role of uh, you know i would categorize what what vanguard does and battle eye and you know any of the easy anti cheat i would I'd categorize those as like software anti cheats i don't know what you what you would call them generically but um software, like, you mean like so i call them i call them host and so it's okay, it's, okay so it's, yeah you're running on the, the the host that's running the game sure okay okay um so so they're host anti cheat you know software um so what role overall do you think these uh you know programs play in the fight against a cheater like would you say it's a 50 oh, 50 terrible. between the developer and the anti-cheat or do you say it's a 30 70 where would you kind of like put when you say developer it? you mean the the engineers that are working on the anti-cheat or the so, developer so the developer of the oh, game so like oh, okay. obviously the yeah. game's going to have their own way of detecting people and cheat and banning them oh, with reviews and other things like where would you place the anti-cheat in that in that kind of algorithm well, the, game, the the responsibility that the game developers largely make sure the architecture can't be exploited. So, and when I say architecture, I mean the way the game and the server communicate, right? Uh, some people refer to this as like server authority, but really what it really what it means is that like if I if the client says something, the server has the final say on whether or not that particular thing was accurate. Like this sometimes shows up in like a player calling a game function in and you know eventually that game client will they, say, say for example it has your like um let's use a silly example you're like casting a spell in any in any mmo or something eventually your client is going to compile uh and some ne a, a, a packet with some parameters that tell the server that your character casted that spell but way before that you're going to have a function that like kind of takes parameters from the user to eventually call like the network layer and send that to the server a lot of like te like a lot of cheating back in the day is just finding where that function is and then passing goofy parameters to it like say the first parameter was just like my player id what would happen if i tried to cast somebody else's spells well it turns out that works like right because the <laughs> server doesn't bother to confirm that the person that the, the 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 client that the traffic was received from was the player that or was the same player that casted the spell um, or you could cast spells that you didn't have or just cast them off cooldown right because there's no server validation for that request um so that's like that's the game developers that's what they're supposed to do right prevent all exploits and i when i say exploits most of them some of them look like that but some of them look uh, a little bit different like maybe they actually rather than calling the function they get even lower and then this is where you're kind of really screwed uh when players can uh, like have understood understood enough of the game's uh like packet protocol to send like uh, compile like requests to the server manually because then you've got none of your client validation it's all been stripped out and they can just send requests like completely unvalidated by the client and audit your server and what that's usually going to do is it's mostly it's going to crash the server but eventually they're going to find something <laughs> um and uh you know what that looks like varies uh you can find videos of it occurring in games i've worked on but yeah eventually they find something and um it, it ends up looking goofy um and anyway so it's the games the game developers responsibility is largely to make sure that like the architecture of the game and the client is secure and once it is and once the server is authoritative in most cases and they've caught all the exceptions of bad parameters and uh you know bad even you know not just like tight that the types confirm but like nobody can do anything like submit other id like the id of another player or like spells they don't have in my previous example once all that's validated then you have the, the second layer right that's where players start to auto aim bots um League right. of legends would call it scripting but it's it's player automation it's like automating the execution of specific things within the game and that's where anti cheat comes in right it's not like once you've ex once you've created a game loop and you've secured that game loop anti cheat kind of sits on top of that to make sure that everybody that is playing is doing it legitimately um and so we'll so, so let me like like uh, just so i can see if, if if i'm following so so people in the audience can kind yeah. of like keep up so um like an example would be like in tarkov you know there was a lot of fly cheats where people were literally flying and exploiting the like the the ability to break physics or they were going underneath the ground and doing this like probably... dolphin dive right and so right. that all got fixed yeah. and i'm sure I'm, I'm pretty sure it was probably all on the develop the game developer side of things and then there was this one where they found out that when you fall off of a uh elevated platform out of a window you always land on like one leg and you break one leg or one 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 leg first so they basically exploited this like memory algorithm or something where they were able to 
to to make the the character get stuck in this like half animation with one leg down. They call it the stanky leg. And it turns out during the coding process, they figured out that like you can't die during that fall, like right at the moment of the fall, the way the game's programmed. So the cheat guys figured out that like, okay, if we force you to be in the stanky leg like position, you can't take any damage unless it's to your legs. So it was their way of like preventing I'm trying to damage. How you up into that. And I mean, I, so I imagine like the game loop is like checking for that state, it like kind of ex, like outside of where it's uh, you know making modifications to aid. So if you're in that state, it just skips a bunch of the remaining of the server. This is a guess. So it's probably yeah. skipping a lot of the other server logic, and they just kind of figured that out. And, but and, uh, and 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 so following what you were saying, this is an example where it's like you know, battle eye is not going to help you here. You know, yeah. It, it's going to help like maybe prevent a software from being detected that's in the background well, that's sending these requests. But at some level, like that little exploit is kind of more on the game developer side. Right. And then they, they have fixed it, right. They have fixed it since I, from, from what I understand, but you know, it is on the game developer, but that's not completely fair. Right. Because that implies that every game studio has the resources to reproduce that cheat. Right. If they don't have, if the game developers themselves don't have anti-cheat specialty, they're going to have to see something like that and guess like I just did like finding a copy of the cheat and determining which functions it's explicitly using would be like that would fall under the purview of an anti-cheat engineer right and one step back you said battle i can't help at all well anti-cheats can help they could identify the software that they're using to do that for example because you, you can't do that in the in the client normally so if the client's been manipulated there's some like integrity stuff you can do to determine whether or not the file on disk is the one it's supposed to be but cheaters don't really do that anymore so it you know but they can detect that like uh, like something simple like a dll has been loaded or something like that um and then they could make that particular piece of telemetry available to the developers so that like they know how to size the problem like 10 players are using this exploit here they all are or like things like this. so anti-cheat can help but they can't fix it and no you should never rely on an anti-cheat for something like, to prevent something like that all they can do is alert you when it's occurred and kind of point you in the right direction is it right is it common practice for uh anti-cheat development teams to go to the market and obtain like those pieces of software and then kind of like go through the reverse engineering process and be like oh so that's how they do it and then yep okay and, and, <laughs> and, 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 so, right. well because I because mean, one of the questions that i got like most commonly when i was like asking you know community people like what do you want to know is was well why don't they just go and like buy the thing and then reverse engineer it and well, i'm like well i don't you, you, maybe they do that can get tough by the way buying stuff some cheating communities in an effort to not have that happen to them because they're this is remember this is a cat and mouse game forever they <clears throat> force you to submit a driver's license when you with your bitcoin payment right it can be really hard to acquire cheats from communities that are really 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 secular with user limits like like some of the aim like aimbots for cs and you know all the other first person shooters they're so like undetection is such a promise of their service that they they protect themselves that way they won it's going to be difficult to find where they even sell it it's going to be harder to acquire a copy you're gonna there's gonna be like um there's gonna be like you know you're gonna to have to get a new copy at a greater frequency they're gonna have anti-leak on it like even i'm gonna to have to pay for it seriously just to use it like they probably got better anti-leak than like i don't know i was gonna use an example of a game but they got they got anti-leak on the it's difficult on right? a game out there <laughs> on a game out there that i won't like a popular gonna, video game man. like something that you crack right um but they got they, they got also anti-cheat engineers know how to make drm or just cheat engineers or they, at least like they 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 could probably make a decent one as long as it's only being attacked by a small subset of users so it can be difficult to get a cheat especially late in the game like so so I'll, I'll i'll give you an example as a user i tried to use one that this guy i was shadowing and they wanted like two forms of id they wanted a essay where they you wrote it in english you had to explain like your history of cheating and like <laughs> why you were cheating and all this Shit. kind of stuff and uh he want they want to interview with with what, voice what is and video question? like i got a knowledge why do you why do you what want to cheat why it, do you easy. want it it's Chat. easier to get your driver's license in the united states than it is to get a cheat like it, it's crazy Chat and, GPT, and, and man. on top of that 
Yeah, and then when you go to download it, you don't get the files. Like, they don't give you a file. There's nothing. You have to, it injects, like, in real time. Like, every time you load the game, it's downloading everything and doing it, and it's different every time. So it's not like there's just this file sitting out there. It's like, why don't you just load it up and see what's in there, you know? Yeah. And they can cut you off, you know, at any time as well. Yeah. And it's going to be even harder for even an anti-cheat engineer that does have a legitimate copy of that game to do the analysis necessary to determine what it's doing. Although, I mean, I, I've worked with some crazy kids in the past. I won't say any of them by name, but they they <laughs> that wouldn't that would just be a Tuesday to them. Like, yeah, <laughs> I think I know one of them. <laughs> yeah, you might. <laughs> um, go ahead, one pack. Like, you got anything? Uh, I, I I've been jabbing yeah, so, too much. So in that. In that same vein, then you're talking about like things are incredibly hard to detect on the on the like, let's say software detection or like maybe behaviorist side of things. And then obviously now with things like chat GPT and and learning algorithms and all this other statistical analysis, people keep, <laughs> right, yeah. I know people keep pushing things like fair fight as a as a retail example of a, a potential yeah. solution where. Um, it, it, you start tracking statistics until the model that you've been working with eventually gets to the point where it feels like it's reliable enough to kind of take over and do the job. So I, my hope was is that you could kind of comment to the effect of how well yeah. that has worked in your history and whether or not you see it like moving more towards statistical analyses. Because on our side of things, you know, in, in like the Tarkov world, we've always kind of looked at it like, well, there's a guy flying through the air. Like, how do you not track the coordinates and just knock this dude out? Well, right? and you know what I mean? So, and, and obviously we have no idea how it works on, on the other side of this. So that you know, like shining light on that, I think would be a big help. Yeah. So, you know, I've been like referring to things as layers, like the, you know, like the, the layer where the game is secure. You're, you're talking about people flying through the air that that should typically be resolved by server sided checks to the player's position. Um, you, I mean, even at the game's tick rate to confirm that they haven't moved faster than they should or that they're in a valid location. Um, but, okay, and then you have an anti-cheat, which can actually, like, explicitly detect things. This allows you to label the behaviors that you're seeing in-game with the explicit, th like, you know, with the evidence that somebody has cheated. And from that, you can start to craft, like, some anomaly detection on top of that that can start to predict whether or not somebody would be cheating in a particular window based on the behaviors exhibited in there and the where the model has been trained. Um, which, and it's often, it's often trained on a set that's generated from typical anti-cheat data. And, and so, it, you know, it, it has its place, it does. Uh, but... Uh, in in and this is mostly again just mostly my experience it's not it's not like the end it's not like the end all like it's not like and i know nobody's we nobody was say ai is going to replace all <laughs> but it really it just isn't there yet um i don't it's not even that it isn't there yet it's that i doubt it'll ever be complete enough because cheaters adapt so quickly and even even the most noble of gestures still got to find a way to get the heuristics in a in a way that they can like productionize to every game and every game looks different so it starts to like a lot of them have in some cases taken shortcuts where they're exfiltrating like heuristic information off the player's machine directly and off to another thing that isn't necessarily the game server which is super easy to attack um i mean you know it's like you could you like you know it's vulnerable to like replay attack it's, it's just difficult to get true behavioral information in a way that is like portable between games but even if you're sitting on the server and you're in your game loot and you have sufficient audit telemetry to do man this is, i don't want to give anything away explicitly but let's say, say you're on the server and you do have like where every player is positioned where they were looking and you know in an effort to detect aim bots that's still even still like players toggle them you're it's really right. hard to know like even when you're labeling it on your own and getting it trained up, it's hard and to know. stuff where they don't just like aim at your head, like they have I mean, like a little bit of jitter and they'll hit you in the chest a couple of times. And and I do and I do think that like <laughs> it's getting better. And we were, you know, I, in, in my past, we put a lot of points into that bucket and we were able to bubble up reports and things to review based on it. But then when you take action on a player, you still need to know. If I, if I just went out and banned like the number one, who's the number one CSGO player right now? Does anybody, I don't know, I don't. I don't play CSGO. But if I just went out and banned a pro player based on the results of a model and I didn't have proof, I don't know if that would fly. So, like, these things kind of work in tandem. Like, you kind of need all you need all pieces. You need a secure game. You need an anti-cheat. You need anomaly detection. And uh, there's some, like, novel attempts at anomaly detection that are trying to solve some of those problems I was talking about. But, like, 
none of them are like completely there yet they all they all require at the very least like anti-cheat developers willing to work with the inputs and outputs to tune them properly which what is, do you think again, of the AI? It's anti cheat. Good. The the Waldo Vision AI stuff that's been floating around right now. What do you what do you think of that? Uh, <laughs> I'm not optimistic. I'm, well, it's because again, like I said, they got to find a way to. I mean, you're on the user's machine, right? Like, or it, it, also, I also I also saw, and I've only seen a little bit on Waldo Vision, but even if you're looking at um, a spectator client, or you're looking at, you're locked to the frame rate of the of you're locked to the updates that the server received. Or if you're looking on a stream, you're 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 looking at that information secondhand and only on the screen. And I've tried to do it where, and just for the credibility, of, I, I mean, I've. I've tried to do this with player player positions and with you know all like with the granularity necessary to actually not just from screen data but knowing where the person was and not having to exfiltrate it from the screen and like it's still not perfect so there's gonna like and when you're looking at like um let's say a spectator client or you're looking at um you're looking at a a, a replay that's 60 fps and the server's running at 128 or whatever you're gonna have like updates that kind of came asynchronously and some of those things are gonna be difficult to train on like that player sent an update kind of out, like say they sent a positional update and then they sent another one or like where they were looking. And I guess the best way to phrase it, they're looking in a particular direction and then they up, they're up, they updating on their, their client f f as frequently as a human would, but then you see them snap because there was a network issue and they only got that update like you know a half they, the server only saw the, the direction, let's say half a second later, it's gonna look like it snapped. And like it's going to be difficult to sort all that out. It is. It's exceedingly difficult. It would be that's trivial that we would if see AI is like here and replay files for like CS 1.6 way back in the day. That's stuff that you would see all the time. You'd swear somebody was cheating because they like between one frame and another frame they would snap 30 degrees to the right and headshot somebody. And it's like wow, they have to be hacking. But really, they just had like way more information than to their own eyes than we saw in the replay file. You're kind of limited to whatever the server tick rate is too. Admittedly, a lot of servers are very fast now, uh, but this even even still, you're you're limited by how frequently the client is sending updates, which has network latency, and especially when you're only looking for aimbots, like where that player was pointed. And uh, and oftentimes when you're looking at the machine, you don't have the in world. It's difficult when you're looking at just like if you're just looking at a replay or you're just looking at a recording. And I don't I don't know where Waldo Vision is actually trying to position itself because I've seen. A couple they, of they seem to want everybody to submit recordings, like user okay. recordings. It seems is, is what they're asking for. That's where my is... skepticism comes from, because you're trying to world the screen everything in different resolutions and in different, in different like across different resolutions across different games, and it's gonna honestly. I think it would be cheaper to just do anti-cheat. And that's that's a that's a problem for like to just do it like I say just do anti-cheat, but host anti-cheat is expensive, but getting that thing getting something like that to work for all cheating, you can probably get like 30 to 50 per, this is I'm going to throw numbers out, but you can you yeah. can probably get a percentage of cheaters, the obvious ones, but all the closet ones, you're just going to need an anti-cheat for anyway. So like this product is providing like it's providing a supplement but it's not the whole problem right and even when you go to train those models you're gonna need an anti-cheat to label the cheaters at the granularity necessary to know when and they were and weren't cheating so like th this is these products necessitate an anti-cheat anyway I'm not saying they're useless because they're not. I mean, I we use models. I've used models at, for, at to, to start with before we had an anti cheat. Even we're like, how many spells or whatever is somebody casting in some game? And you can use that to kind of get at based on APM where the highest risk users are. The problem becomes like delineating that from the pros. Um, but anyway, yeah. behaviorally, we've, we've had our own share <laughs> of those issues too. So yeah, like I, like Dil, Dil Hero is a is a well known streamer that is it's statistically like in the upper like one tenth of one percent. And he ended up catching a ban because of a clip that somebody submitted, believing them to cheat. And it wasn't that; it was just really bad, like desync between clients on the on the server. I, but but that combined with his stats got him manually banned for a day. You know, yeah. So even, that's, also, that's even the kind of stuff. Mistakes, like yeah. if you're reviewing something specifically. I mean, I've also had models that have banned that like I was certain of in the training and test set, but they were missing like they're missing that sample of like the upper echelon of that particular game. 
And then when we go to action on, even though it's 100% accurate in my test set, I was missing coverage of some demo within the game that performed differently, and they were seen as an anomaly, and I've banned them. I had, I mean, I've unbanned them within hours, <laughs> but I've done Oopsies. it. Yeah. So on on that. <laughs> On that topic, uh, there has been a lot of controversy, especially recently, but over the last few years in Tarkov community, about false bans. Um, and I know you don't need to speak on this specifically, but for a long time, the developers denied that there were false bans. But then as soon as a bunch of prominent streamers, you know, there's been like probably half a dozen, were banned, they were basically forced to admit it. And then at that point, it kind of opens up the floodgates, right? Um, so... Uh, well, this kind is where of... anti-cheat kind of comes in. You have the ability to review a player's history in that anti-cheat. So you can... It, I mean, just to know... So even if you are operating completely behaviorally, like, you need the you need the evidence to know. Um, but yeah, sorry, I did kind of cut you off there. Was there more to that thought? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I have a few questions related to that in particular. Yeah. Um, like, what's the general attitude or philosophy in the anti-cheat community regarding, like collateral damage and like is there a certain rate of false positives that are acceptable as long as the cheating's well, bad enough you or in interview, you say not no uh, um no the I'll, I'll i'll answer that so um the answer is none you don't want any um but inevitably it does it happens and it comes at you in unique ways even if you try to anticipate it um like you know people share accounts there's one source of false pot you'll ban people that didn't even know it was them that's actually probably the biggest case of false positives and like it's just it wasn't me it was my brother how do i prove sometimes the burden of proof is on you if like you know the account security isn't up to snuff but other times it's just like the account took bad action account is banned right is that a false positive like so a lot of things so when you say false ban it's not always like a result of a false detection sometimes like the account itself wasn't like it was accessed by different people and um and i'll say like you you want none but there is an acceptable amount uh, where you're like willing to carve out an allowed number of false positives per like as a percentage and like four nines is typically where i draw the line because that because that means that all the one like through escalation you'll have as long as your review team is of sufficient size you can create like a tiered system and this is again at like really mature studios not every developer is going to be able to do this when but, you like, say you four can... nines you mean like 99.9999 percent yeah one one false positive for every ten thousand bands um which is that that's my personal like that's where i that's where i like allow a model to go out if it can achieve that kind of accuracy it's funny you because know, from a like from a player perspective i'm okay with like five to ten percent of the player population like maybe cheating a little bit here and there like that's like from a player perspective i'm like i can, can deal with that i just can't deal with like half my raids you know well, well that's that has a percentage of fans going like, out yeah i know that's, no but it, oh, it's right. funny when you flip the tables like what where are like acceptability <laughs> well, like that's so another much. thing we don't need to action every cheater right some cheaters just don't do a lot of damage if you if you cheat and you suck like and this again is mostly at mature anti-cheat teams you can start to prioritize bands to kind of control the speed at which you, like i'm not gonna ban every cheat i detect instantly right because then they're just gonna issue an update and then i'm gonna have to detect that cheat so like to slow that down we kind of play this little and most cheaters are kind of familiar with this trying to figure out if you've actually been detected or if like the behavioral model has detected you and like a lot of that is this kind of back and forth where we're trying to deliberately occlude who's been detected by only banning the ones that cheat well and i'm not saying Rangers. like just and like you just said, as a player, you don't give a shit if they suck at it because you don't. You actually don't. Like if if they if they if they were like a twenty percent win rate and the cheat puts them at thirty percent, we'll get them. Like they're detected, we'll ban them eventually. But the urgency of that ban is is dramatically decreased. Like it doesn't. It wouldn't bother you, um, or it wouldn't bother a player as much. Like we notice that player would be reported less, or like um, it w would lose more. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like from a player perspective, I. I would be okay if five to ten percent of my Tarkov raids had a cheater in it, and if and if they were constricted to not being super blatant and 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 raging, you know, if they just were cheating, like I don't like it. No one likes it, but I think that's a reasonable. Like this is, you know, we're we're in reality here, you know, and I think most people like don't realize that that's kind of like the, I don't know, like the the kind of goal in a game like Tarkov, the way it's built and, and, and the kind of game it is and how people love cheating in it. And, and the, the whole, like the market around cheating is just insane in Tarkov. I mean, people yeah. are spending 
fifty dollars on an account per week. They're they're spending sixty to eighty dollars a week on cheats, and it, and they're spending another thirty dollars a week for a spoofer. I mean, <laughs> what a cheater's like willing to do to cheat. Clubs. Yeah. Like I could go golf at a really nice country club here near where I live, and it costs less. Like <laughs> it's crazy, you know. Well, yeah, one yeah. last one last. Oh no, go ahead. No, please. I, I, they're just gonna make a joke. I, I've seen I've seen way more than that. I've seen cheats that yeah. cost a thousand dollars. I've seen cheats that cost a thousand dollars per update. I mean, oh, it's man. and it's not even not even financial hurdles like the ones you're talking about before. Like, show your driver's license, give us your social security number. Damn, man. Like dudes with disposable income don't give a shit. This is crazy. Well, it's, it's like, I mean, I, I you know we won't get too into the motive. Maybe we will later. But it, like once you've cheated, once you've cheated, it's difficult to not cheat. Like it's that an addiction, a man. Because <laughs> the once you're banned, you're also kind of like severed from like the community you were in, right? And so like the next time you engage, why not just cheat? It's one of the reasons like bans got to be like prioritized because you, you know it's hard. It's really, really, really hard to reform a cheater. I mean, we know the explicit rate on the, based on genre, and I can't share it. But it's it's really hard. When so like I used to cheat, and I can, and I can't play first person shooters without cheating. I can't because I can't aim. I never learned to do it. <laughs> So like it's too, like... <laughs> dude. I mean, I, I've heard like, listen, I've been in like Discord Stay chats. Out of my raids, man. And and guys literally no, talk I, about I, I guys. Guys literally talk about how like they're addicted. Like they'll even use the word. They'll just say it out. It, 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 it's kind of like alcoholism or something. They 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 can't go to a bar or steroids. They know, like it's they they know Holy thyself. Shit. You know. One more thing on the motivation. Like, there's like, some cheater like, AA. What the fuck. You're, I had I, there's like a talk out there where some of the other Vanguard developers went on to like sell a sell a company or two. Anyway, they they talk about like the motivations of cheating. It was actually like a it, it was like part of the psychology. And there's like a couple of reasons. Um, actually, it's like four I think they say. But one of them is like for money. The developers themselves like they probably originally had an interest in it, but like have now kind of evolved into a place where it's like their livelihood. There's others that are cheating for like they want to be seen as competitive amongst their friends. It's for like the social standing of being good at something. But then there's like this third class, which is like some of the cheat developers themselves just do it to break stuff and like have you know like for the attention of it for the renown like look at me i'm breaking stuff yeah. i was that third thing to be clear like i was the narcissistic cheater where it's like look yeah. at me i'm breaking stuff i'm the best uh, you know and i think like, i outsmarted you and yeah yeah and i'm not i mean to be clear i'm just like a i was an idiot who found like a it, the game had a pdb i was able i knew all the right it was anyway it was more mostly for the attention of it um and then there's like a fourth class which is like I, th I think they define it as like people doing it to get to like get through grindier stuff like for them it's it's like the automation of it is to like the economy of like, like 100 kilokills i ran it yeah i ran into every one of those types of people in my video i ran i ran into people with like 0 0.5 kds which normal is like one to like five uh who were cheating and and they literally messaged me afterwards and said listen i just like i, I run it every once in a while I, I don't really kill that many people i just want to get some stuff done and then you have like the white hat people who are like i'm here to like i'm like this egotistical person that's here to save everybody but it's crazy the amount of money that the developers bring in i think some numbers are thrown around people estimate that the abs cheat that i used that reseller was was bringing in about 250k a month Oh fuck so, off! Dude. And and and, ju and and just an announcement I, I, here. I believe it. The number of people that were using it, I believe that. Don't yeah. even. So, and and, they've, and, they, and they've been running undetected for three years. So like they had a credible product. They they had a pipeline. They had tons of resellers. Dude's and, got and, money. and 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 the numbers like add up. Like I did the numbers. I saw the amount of stuff moving and stuff. And and I, I think it's legit. Um. Now, by the way, they I, did get shut down. Their servers got taken down. They switched to reselling a different product that got banned the day it went up. And then last week, Odin, the one that they switched to, got banned. Uh, oh, so crazy. they're hurting. They also kicked me out of their Discord and stopped talking to me and banned me. I, the, we used to shit talk back and forth, and they stopped doing that. Dude, last it'll week, be up so. in seventy two hours. They'll remember. Not and that, <laughs> yeah. it's, now. It's two to three weeks. So yeah, yeah, they're they're gonna be on it though, bro. You don't worry. They're coming back with a vengeance. They swear. Yeah, it's, real, real. I mean, it, it's hard to put an actual dent in like the profitability of a cheat without like having like what we'll talk about is like layer four or five in the layer analogy. But it's like eventually you have to like teams have to consider legal options. And it's not because you can't detect them or like you don't have the resources to, but it actually becomes cheaper to hire a lawyer to sue them. Like it eventually hits this jet fuel equation where it's like, okay, this person is now iterating and like they might be in an area where that vector is tenable. But, um, 
I, I will say it, it, it can be really profitable. It depends on like the player base of the game, the strength of the cheats, like how, how good the hit, the fix is. And Tarkov, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> it sounds, I mean, like, like again, but they're kind of like in that weird phase where there's still a lot of exploits available. I've been there uh, is on both sides of the line of scrimmage and it's difficult, but uh, I mean, I don't know. I've seen people put up a lot. 250 is a lot, 250 a month. I've seen more, not much more, but that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think one of the things that was really for selling it for that one is 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 undetected for three years. So you're building this this community and this player base over years. And I think one of the things the reason it did so well is it didn't. It was only it was pretty much an ESP only cheat. So it's not doing anything. It didn't have detectable features. So there's no speed hacking. There was no you know flying and and there, it didn't do anything to your aim. It wasn't an aim bot. So this thing just lasted so long. Uh, and was I don't think they ever, they, 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 they never detected it. No. Was it wire, wireframes and radar. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's actually, well, yeah, that's the allure. I mean, like that stuff is also like, once you have that stuff, it's really, that's the hardest stuff to play without seeing through walls. Like it's really hard because like the information of like, like talking about CS type game, first person shooters, it's like, that's the, that's the whole point of the game at a certain point is the control of information. So it's like, it is the, you can, you, you just don't develop the skills, so you can't play without it. Uh, but anyway, the, the, trying to be undetected, the, the most expensive cheat I ever sold for guns was one that was just, it was like a humanized aimbot. And I, and I, like, it was one person who offered me 30, and I hope they're listening because this would be really funny, but they offered me $30,000, 30,000. And this is in 2000. Like, Crazy. And this was just for, because all, there were aimbots out there, but they wanted one explicitly that no one could see, like, no one would know they were cheating. So and they I wanted the only it. sub to it. They wanted to be the only yeah, one with it, right? Only one with it. And, and I made it. never going to get caught. Auto -upgrading. I went yeah. to the whole thing. And uh, I mean, they never charged it. I mean, I had the payment, you know, half now, half later. And they used it for like two years, I guess. I never followed it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the alert of like being undetected. You can either sell, there's like those two markets. You can sell something that's undetected or you can sell something that's like an exploit on mass for the joy of it. I mean. I fucking love these stories, dude. This is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like we thought so the, like, the yeah, uh, 30 grand fuck it <laughs> so i, mean, I, I gotta I, ask i hope the statute of limitations ends up on that one <laughs> yeah it is it is for sure it's been a long time so uh i got this comment a bunch why do you hate uh linux people i don't hate linux people they're <laughs> going on they, they, they seem to think that you them. hate linux people like that's what i, I got this comment I, 100 linux. comments at least why do you hate us linux people I don't. I don't. But like, I think the, I, I can't even really comment on this because some of this goes back, but I'll, I'll say my personal opinion. Like, the, the, the user base from a product perspective, like where, like where we would, because what we wanted to offer, what I wanted to offer was a spot where there was no cheats. And I couldn't do that at the, there are some, th there are some uh, stuff, you know, this was my opinion at the time. But like, I, the only way I could do that was, and you look at the amount of users that actually play from Linux, how engaged they are. And some of them are like hyper fixated, like person, like they, they like, they're really into like, they're like computing and they're like power users. But like, the, it's such a small subsect of the game. And I know this is going to sound, this is going to make it worse, but most of them know how to install wine. Like most of, like the, you, most of them know how to dual boot. <laughs> like they can totally... They can, they like, they, like they could totally go in and run it windows and run it the way that right. it needs to be done I, and i because i have to have a shot like there's no if i if we have like back in the day if we had a linux client or we tried to like directly support that we wouldn't be able to run the anti-cheat in that environment in the way we needed to to confirm that players weren't cheating also like people it would like open a lot of doors to emulation and people manipulating the memory of the host instead of the or like the the memory of the virtual machine and, and like we'd be running and we'd be virtualized like any a lot of the ways to open the ability to run the anti-cheat on on their preferred platform which i guess is wine in this case would like allow other cheaters to emulate that path to manipulate the the virtual machine um which is like something we just couldn't fight with well at the time we couldn't compete with like it would be too difficult to do so when you look at it and you're like 0. 0.00001 percent of the user base prefers that you do in like all and it, it opens up the like an entire avenue of cheating you're like that just isn't worth it for like the vision we want to achieve with this game but it's not that i hate linux users because i don't like I, I i mean i don't use it anymore i'm addicted to i'm addicted to uh to windows but like 
Yeah, I guess that's the best way to say. And, and 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 in my like, you know, I've never run a Linux machine, but my understanding is if you're running Linux on a computer, like you're 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 not like a normal pleb. Like you have some understanding of computers. There's a reason you're running Linux. There's got to be a way for gaming that you can figure that out, how to dual boot and 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 get off Linux, you know, to go game or something, you know. Is that why uh, a lot of games will? Forbid the ability to launch the game inside of VMware yep. because They're of that, worried. specifically because of like cheat issues. Well, yeah, it's well at the base layer, you can modify, you can just, you can have your cheat run outside. Like, okay, uh, at the base, you can have your cheat run on the host and then just, uh, you know, you could have it screen read the virtual machine and the anti cheats running in the virtual machine. It can see nothing that's occurring externally. You know, a kind of an analog is like if I had. If if I pointed a webcam at my screen that was connected to a separate computer, right? You have no you have no hope of determine you have no hope of seeing that if you're running, uh, you know, if you're running on the host. In this case, it's one layer even further deep. If you're in the virtual machine, if you're in the virtual machine, that anti cheat has no hope of determining what's going on on the host. But it can, de you know, with some techniques, determine that it is in a virtual machine and disallow it. Um, which is what I do remember. I do remember a Tarkov band wave like uh, a year ago or something where they like removed the ability to run virtual environments or something. And there were a lot of people who got caught up in that, but it was like, why are you running the game in a virtual machine? Like, uh, you know, um, I remember that yeah, was, they did that that was a few years ago in the last okay. play test. And the I'll last play test for dark and darker, they pulled that. And then people were like popping in chat, like, why can't I run it in a virtual machine? I'm like, cause you're cheating. <laughs> Is there any reason to run a game in a virtual environment? Like, I'm just trying to think of, like, one reason you would. I I mean, like, if you're on Linux would be a good example. Or like, yeah, I guess, yeah. Or if you're, like, spinning up a massive bot farm and you need a reason to run 20 instances of the game or something. Um, but, so, no, there's not too many legitimate ones. And it, with the exception of the power users, which is why we're, like, 99% of the use case for virtual machines is subterfuge bots or cheats. So we just can't support it. And it's not like... Literally, we can't afford to support it. It's not like, um, it's, it's actually a pretty easy case to make internally, but it's hard to tell somebody that like your platform of choice isn't the one we can support right now. Yeah, uh, I mean, it is a war. Day. Yeah, it, like there, there's a war great. going on here. We have to pick our battles and right. it's just not you smart to, to spend benefit. so much resources on something also, like Linux. Also, they're making fun of me for talking about virtual machines. And I say there, I'm talking about anti-cheaters. Um, yeah. So. I there's a massive community. So I'll, I'll point out that also if you're in the host, you can just modify the memory of the VM. You don't have to like screen read. That's one of the vulnerability is that, um, gonna, sorry, I was reading the comments on the thread. Be careful in there. You can just cheat by like, if like exploits in Tarkov would be possible by modifying the physical memory of the virtual machine instead of like lo needing to do like anti-cheat in the, like you don't need, or, or like um, attaching to the game client or whatever. Anyway, yeah, cool. It just okay. makes it makes cheating kind of trivial, and it and it kind of blinds the anti cheat. That's the best way to say it at high level. Veritas, fire off! You got you got something. I know. <clears throat> well, I I got. I know. I the, I, I'm not the, I have like twenty seven so questions over the last. We could literally talk to you for ten hours, but I, I'm trying to like I'm trying to like okay. Else All right, so so to focus on on something specific here. Um, are things like replay systems or other crowdsourced solutions like CS:GO's Overwatch? manual statistical analyses or like video clips submissions ever are any of those things ever acceptable for detecting cheaters and and or manual banning like how much of that is acceptable like or reliable watching a spectator client and choosing whether or not to ban somebody based on just watching e yeah so like either watching clips looking at st stats um either individually like you're a developer or or crowdsourced solutions like overwatch where you have a bunch of people that say this is sus or this isn't sus like what where's the threshold i think you can like use that to kind of direct like anomaly detection efforts like having them kind of you know um or like kind of using that to determine what which players are worth looking at but i don't think you can issue bans on that kind of thing alone and i think it's twofold one is like the latency problem we were talking about before where you don't know when you're looking at a replay even if it's an in-client replay how frequently that particular client was sending updates and if you're looking at a recording you don't even know the fidelity that that was taken at like it, it just it's difficult to know to know although like overwatch if we're talking about the cs system also kind of 
w they like exposed character models through the walls so you could kind of like determine whether or not it was likely that somebody did have vision and that that's kind of an interesting use case because you're not relying on their performance data you're relying on like their their reactions to intelligence that i think you can do but for aimbots i don't think it's as applicable it can definitely like help label aim events like you know events like you know um windows of uh of of aim vectors to try to like determine whether or not you should look at a particular player based on like how frequently that occurs across like a a, a time period um and i know i'm being kind of vague i kind of have to be i'm sorry guys i wonder but, how like, i wonder how subjective yeah, i wonder how subjective that is because like if if you are completely ignorant to shooters and tactics and you have like you never played them or you have no game sense it's kind of like you know, the, the the saying any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Uh, the idea that you can watch someone, even in like Call of Duty uh, kill cams, how you can see something and say, that looks like cheats to me. And you can just be ignorant of the fact that that was a common spot or they heard you and, and you don't have decent headphones or your volume wasn't up loud enough or, or, or whatever the thing is. Where's the threshold between where someone like Shroud playing competitively will peek out at just the right time because they know the map timings and things like that. Like I don't know the answer, and that's why I wouldn't trust other people to do it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and I, I, yeah. I feel like that's in those That's a problem cases, in Tarkov. If it's really obvious, like, they're going to get caught in a million other ways. Like, someone who, who, who flies up in the middle of the air and goes, bop, 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 and kills everybody on the map. It's like, okay, like, well, I, that, you know, we well, don't that, need the replay for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need the replay for that. It's the close edge cases where you have really good plays and and it's close and people aren't sure. That's when the replays kind of fail and 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 giving you concrete, you know, evidence. You know, I call them hack the, the dill hero example. Right, accusations. Right, where like some some pro player has been accused. Right, and everybody's looking at some particular replay, and sometimes it's as small as five seconds, and it's like, look at this snap. Right, and it's like that's un that's not healthy. That's not a healthy place to be in. Um, it was what Cipher PK like three months ago. I mean, it, it isn't he... just it's every game. I mean, every game has had that happen. And and, um, and everybody like when when you have the skills that those guys have. I mean, like I'm one percent of the player of of any of those guys, and I have in my ten thousand hours. That's all on YouTube of me playing Tarkov. I have probably half a dozen examples that's like that are just lucky that are unexplainable other than I thought I heard something and I and I didn't, but I flicked and got the headshot and it's like what if you were the only judged on that one frame? Right? Like well, also when you when those things are posted, you're only looking at one thing. Not like the window isn't large enough to determine all the times they missed or whatever. Yeah. It, it's it's one of the reasons I take issue with like I we don't not do it, to be clear. Like you do look at that stuff when you're trying to make a when you're trying to make a decision on whether or not you should look further, like, is this what, you know, like, is how many times, it, like, just like looking at how many times a particular account has been reported, like, it gets it into the queue to open a case against it, but, like, it doesn't necessarily, like, it shouldn't result in an action alone. Um, and I th actually think, I don't, I don't think any team I've been on has ever, like, actioned off of only a replay. So, uh, I, I, uh, obviously, we... <laughs> unless, unless, like, act, okay, I should preface this. If they are, if it's a replay where they're flying around or whatever. By yeah. the way, Dill Hero's in chat. By the way, so. hi Dill, what up, buddy? Yeah, so that's in 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 a number of cases with with notable streamers, and and the only reason why I bring up streamers is not because they're special, but because what they do is they shed light on the fact that that these things exist. Because when a normal person gets banned, if they get false banned, if you know they have no way to defend themselves. But when a streamer gets banned while they're cheating and you can see that somebody submitted on the forums at 1 p.m. a clip that was like totally net code, they teleported and killed the person. And then they, from their perspective, they just run through the door and shot the guy. And then they find out that he was reported and banned an hour later. <laughs> it's kind of impossible to deny that it was very likely a manual ban. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, you're also talking about a scenario where, like, it sounds like the server is not the the in like these these replays have not been, are not server sided replays. That not even like replays. An, like a a, they're, a they're clip, a recorded Twitch, clip okay. from I Twitch or yeah. Dog, to be clear. But yeah, that's somebody, why, somebody that's put why a Twitch clip or like a local clip from their own yeah. host computer. 
True. Oh, good point. Okay, so I'm dying or whatever. These are different local. Also, these are compete. These are like competing versions of reality. I w I would yeah. really really be reluctant to use local clips. Spect and I'm I and I'm also not that into using like spectator replays either. Um, we we do use them to like kind of direct efforts, but we it's hard to use them reliably, especially if a game's not server. Um, like you know you can't you don't have a you don't have a base truth for like events that have occurred, which in this it, case, because the server lacks authority on. So our, our, I guess, the, I guess my question would be is in, in the toolkit of people trying to, I don't know, assist with getting, you know, cheaters rooted out or whatever, is the idea of having a replay system because like, oh, like either games are saying right. they're adding them or they're saying that they're going to be, or, or they already, they added them because of like, community pressure or whatever um like are they useful for this or is it more of like a tool to um i like try to suss out at least on the observers level whether or not they should report somebody because oh that wasn't actually like somebody cheating they were just i was just positionally in a crappy spot they're not i mean i don't personally see a lot of like to anti-cheat assuming that you've got the layers <laughs> they don't add that much value but this assumes that you've you've been investing in an anti-cheat for years like there are some things you could do by just lo having that granularity log server side um like uh like uh like like and i'm talking about in the event that the server is authoritative and you do know where every person was at all times like having this shunted into like an observer system can kind of allow for like i could download a replay and, and extract the information from it right yeah demo file uh, sure right and that would make it easier for me to do like types of behavioral anti-cheat analysis but it again it's i if you have the other forms of anti, if you have the other layers, it's not, it would not be my highest priority. I'm not saying, also, there's like thousands of reasons to want replays. I'm just saying anti-cheat wouldn't be that high in there. I'm not pushing for them on my, on my teams. I'm and, like, and, and I used to be, anything. I used to be a big proponent. I wanted a replay because I think in a game like Tarkov, one of the things that is different about it is, you know, there's not like a clear objective. There's not like an A and B site like in Valorant or, or, or Counter-Strike. And it's like very like open world. You have a lot of dead time. You might not run into, into, into anyone for 10 or 20 minutes. And my my reasoning for a, for a replay at this point is not necessarily to catch cheaters. It's to force cheaters to play more like real players, which would make cheaters the impact they, that they would have on your raid would be a little less they like they would they would be forced to know that someone could watch this bot i can't just like sit there and like track this guy through a wall for like 20 minutes and do this and then shoot him and there's no evidence of me tracking him you know like but but i have backed away from that position over the last couple months um after talking to people like you and others um but i i guess going kind of back into the um game development side of things how do you rate the importance of thinking of anti-cheat in mind when you're oh, creating a game? I'm gonna be biased as hell. <laughs> like, <I> mean, like, <laughs> well, this is this is. I mean, I want to hear like what are the, the pros and cons. Higher, I think if you wanted a special, because it's really hard to get stuff off the shelf to address this in post. Like it's really hard. So like if you haven't been thinking about it the whole time, you're gonna end up you're gonna just get caught with like the the back all. Every, you're just gonna be caught with your pants down. It's it's, it's oh no, um, and it like so. And I'm not saying like ever, we found like thousands of ways to not build anti-cheat. It was like a very iterative thing, but we got a head start, right? So we, you know, we figured out all the ways to not do it. Um, so yeah, getting a head start helps. And yeah, especially, it, depend, it does depend a little bit on the genre. Like if you're going to get into the first person shooter game, playing against one egregious aimbotter is rough. Like it pretty much, every other person you see immediately after that, you're going to doubt whether or not a particular headshot or an event was legitimate. It just tanks, it can tank player engagement to a degree that isn't seen in other genres. That's one of the reasons that, like, we went as hard as we did when I was working on Valorant. Yeah. Go ahead, guys. I, I don't want to... Oh, I'll say one thing, because I'm... I'm re I don't know how you guys, by the way, engage in chats and also... Re <laughs> like, so every oh, we don't. You, just ignore them. Just ignore them. No, I'm like, just kidding. Uh, you just if, have ADHD if like they don't a motherfucker give us, like me, man. That's all. If they don't give I, us money, we just ignore them. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna play to one comment. Donor wall, bitch. Somebody kinda it's somebody pointing out the value of a replay system in training like AI. And I think I did briefly touch on that. And it's like you can use it to start to carve out anomaly detection with like by supervising, because even if you know you assume that the number of events you get wrong is kind of ironed out in the aggregate. But like 
even then you can train those things faster with like explicit anti-cheat but still it, it can be useful in that use case and i think i also highlighted like when the esp is rendered you can kind of make a determination on whether or not there was information present that you didn't know about or that like, the player shouldn't have known about um which play that can that can be kind of left up that might be even better for humans to determine than a model to determine because you might learn something but make no behavioral indication within the game that you know it until like five minutes later when you like shoot somebody you shouldn't have known was there anyway i got cool. a i got a qu uh, a question about if if there's a push in the anti-cheat industry or at least discussions or if this has been totally you know thrown to the to the side the idea of like getting into the identity management business it, which touches on a couple of different things I mean, you have like biometrics and whatever, but then you also have like submit your social security number and your license. Yeah. Then there's email and SMS validation or, you know, entrusted servers. Where does all that fit in? And the people just say, oh, well, why don't they just, you know, make it so that you got to do two factor authentication with your phone, at, you know, as if you can't just get Google phone numbers infinitely, you know. Um, the VoIP game's hard. Yeah, I mean, a lot... Um, I mean, I do. that is definitely, like... I'm going to use the layer analogy again, but that's pretty much where you end up. Once you can detect cheats, you got to start detect... You got to start determining the trust of any person connected to the game. Any client. Let's say... That, let's call them clients. So, like, there are a thousand... There's tons of ways that uh, people and nations have approached to doing that. Um, some developers in some regions can ask that you submit your social security number and can use that to ban you from the game. And, and th those regions benefit from that. Um, it's not the case in every region. Uh, and then there's also, like, you're going to... When you get into identity management, you start to get into whether or not you can trust the host. Um, this is where I'll, I'll briefly like allude to some of the stuff, but it's like where you can kind of, it's like why Vanguard, for example, requires that you have, if you have a TPM module and you're on Windows 11, you have it enabled. Um, it's it, a lot of this stuff is so like we can start to, de we can start to determine whether or not we can trust a connected client. Because <clears throat> the, the, like imagine a heat score that like slowly increases based, okay, Windows was installed yesterday. It's Windows 7 for some reason. It's connect it, you know all it's hard all the hardware appeared in the system for the first time three seconds ago that thing has a ton of risk associated with it right i might let it play but there's no reason i should let it join ranked right so you start to get in this trust game to kind of increase it's gotta be a vm right <laughs> that's what i would well, if it wasn't if it's running vanguard it's not but like if, <laughs> um right but so we start to enforce specific requirements on the hosts so that we can both ensure that like they haven't been tampered with in a way that would make it uh, you know easy for a cheat to load but also so that we can determine like that this user hasn't cheated before especially in a free to play game like Valorant or like you know um uh, but I I'm not saying just in free to play games too cuz like like we've already established cheaters are more than willing to buy another copy of a game so like you you got to think of these things as barriers and like you got to put as many of them up as you can so that your anti cheat team stands a chance to reply to the cheats that make it over it think of it like you know a throttle yeah you can spoof your email you can spoof a phone number you can spoof your hardware id yeah, you can I... spoof your ip address you can spoof yeah. your, your operating system you could spoof your you could you know i mean there's just so many there's just so many yeah. ways to get I around all of these is another things. thing you have to do to cheat again which and i'll take every single one of those every time because it slows it's slow even like even like the most determined cheaters like like say like they have especially when you get in and i admittedly it's rough like games have to be really into the anti-cheat stuff to start getting into this game i mean few studios are starting to play it but like like triple a studios have the budgets to do it but you can start to gate access to game features based on the states uh, like the trust of that session like um if you don't have a verified phone number for example you can't play ranked or whatever you, you know different things like that and um you know I guess the last thing, you were talking about hardware fingerprinting and stuff. Uh, a lot of that stuff, like, that, that's where, like, attestation comes in. And, like, you'll see, you'll probably start to see products of this shape, like, start to come out more and more as we, as, like, the the hardware that's necessary to do it. Uh, it, it like, the, the, the penetration in the market is there. Like, we can start to accurately determine with limited subterfuge the the fingerprint of a particular device and then you can slowly create a network of like trusted machines and untrusted machines and it makes it like then cheaters then the cost to re-enter a game is buying a new piece of hardware 
Yeah, yeah. So, so someone in, in chat asked, like, why, why can't you just create a new operating system? And that's essentially what consoles do, right? They they create their own operating systems with their proprietary hardware, and that's why. Isn't that kind of why, like? Xbox or PlayStation, it's so much more difficult to do a cheat in that environment because they force this hardware attestation. And you can't run Linux and you can't run virtual machines and you can't do all this other stuff. They've got it locked down. You know, is that is that is that true? Is that a good way of thinking of it? I mean, they do like, well, a lot of the hacking that goes on on consoles is at the hardware level, right? Because it's Corona Zen. um, You don't have access to the software unless it's got like a thumb drive port, you know, and like. Yep. So, well, yeah, and then, you know, it's, they also, they have, propri- they can do, like, propri- they have proprietary device IDs and stuff like that, but the thing that's been, like, made available on Windows is, like, is is the trusted platform, mo- and, like, in hardware assertion based on it, which would, is, cur- is impossible to spoof. We, even through reinstallations of the operating system, even, you can change all the hardware you want, right, but we know that that CPU is the one that we, the one that we banned before. So you have to buy a new one. Um, and that's like, and I'm not tr- like, I'm not even for turning the PC into a console, but I am for like, like for the environment you want to play games in for the most competitive ones, we should be able to secure them. And that could just be like a, a that ju- could just be like the, the copy of windows 11 you use for games and you can have like your hack box or whatever for like extracurricular activities. But the one you play the game with. We need to be able to enforce the integrity on. And, and what do you think about trusted lobbies? Like people say, fine, I don't, I don't want to do any of this. I don't want to turn TPM on. I don't want to have, uh, you know, uh, like secure boot and all this kind of stuff. And I want to run on Linux. Like why not allow people to have a split lobby where they go and they have that playground? And then the people that want to be in the, in the trusted lobby and, 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 and want well, that high level that's... security. I genuinely believe that's where it'll go. You'll opt in to a more, and, mo, and you'll be surprised. Like a lot of players probably would. Oh, this area has no cheats in it. That's the one I'll, uh, I think I'll head into that one. Uh, like, and obviously like, it's not like we're not gonna secure the, like, you know, game developers wouldn't try to secure other modes, but I, I do think it's gonna be opt-in, like opt-in trust measures that like, you can, I can, you can even see this like a long time ago with ESA, like ESA, they would, they would require that you like verify yourself to gain access to certain competitive modes. Uh, I think we're going to see more of that. It's well, just that's eye racing. In order to, in order to race and eye racing, you have to oh, really? provide them a credit card with your real name in it. And your wow. username for eye racing is your first and last name. Whoa. Yeah, the, the company, the company I want to exist. That if That's I had a billion dollars, I would start today. And it, it, there's there's issues, so it wouldn't work. But if I could sit down and have an interview with a like one of these identity management security specialist companies, show them my license, interview them to say that it's me, and have them like lock my account, and all that is is like like a service like PayPal, where other people integrate it, and all you get when you pay through PayPal is a token. You don't get the, as the company who's, who's selling the thing, you don't get the credit card information. You don't want the credit card information. I don't need their name or their address or the credit card information. Let PayPal deal with that. Um, if I yeah. could handle the validation, it'd be amazing. The only problem there um, is... <clears throat> well, you where, take the burden of fraud, I think. is I don't know if that's what you're going to say. Well, it's, it's, if, like, if you get fished and someone steals your, your account and then logs in and cheats, if you're using, if this company... You know, like if Call of Duty and Overwatch and CSGO and Battle, you know, Battle State games and Valorant all implement this whole thing, right? They use this service to where they get this trusted additional layer. Um, you're then screwed from all the games because you didn't have a strong enough password on one email, right? So that's like the biggest flaw with that. But I would be willing to have a 20 minute interview and to give my license and everything over to any company. They all have my shit anyway. All the companies have all my information. So and, and some kind of blockchain. Thing. Right. I want to get something from it. I think you'll see a lot of competitors if that were that. Like a lot of. Also, when you talk about transactions, like doing your credit, like there's going to be chargebacks. There's going to be account takeovers. There's, it's going to be like if somebody were to for like gain gain access to a game under your user that was you'd be deny listed from everything, like you're saying. But also like transactions like if somebody used one of your credit cards that 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 into that centralized entity you're describing would be responsible for and i don't think like any one entity is going to want to inherit all that risk i think is part of the problem but that's just a guess because like we don't see we don't see a lot of that today but maybe in the future maybe we'll see 
I mean, if you guys, I mean, I got, I, I, I can go for days. I gotta make, one peg. Go, uh, let's oh, say I something. Can't. I've been, I've been, I've been talking. I'm all yours for at least forty-five more minutes. And I can't transfer. Oh, this. Veritas is a good guitar player, but can't sing for shit. You told me to say Sorry something. That. I can sing pretty well, oh, but I'm actually pretty bad at the guitar. I don't know if that. Help. Maybe we should get together sometime. That's all I'm saying. You know, but you guys should uh, guitar with desync and just prove the the point. You know that it doesn't work. You know. The timing just isn't not right. Yeah, you should play Rocksmith and tell me that you can't play guitar with, with D-Sync. I've never played Factor. Rocksmith. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know. Is it good? I don't know. No. Um, no. No, it's not. It would be good um, if they had you, any songs. Okay. I, do have, I do have a question. Um, do you have... I mean, maybe you don't have, like... Yeah, obviously no specific examples, but have you worked on, uh, like, relatively popular games that had a cheating issue and then through implementation of you know x y and z you saw the cheating populations drop like drastically and stay that way <laughs> stay or that or, way. or or did you find i mean I obviously wish. it's a constant back and forth battle feature ended all cheating <clears throat> you want to know if there's if, if there's a hope for tarkov is what you want to yeah, yeah, know like I'm, I'm looking at it like let's say let's say tarkov's player base like i, I don't think eight, I'm eight to ten percent of those people cheat right like obviously the idea is to try and like whittle that number down it might be a constant battle but you see the trend line decrease through through you know whatever modes whatever in in your history have you had those instances occur with games that you've worked in or on where you've seen that happen and you know continue that trend line to something more manageable i mean or is it remained relatively consistent regardless of effort i got i got um I mean, I've I've seen a I mean there is a couple of key moments where like technology like took a a quick leap that prevented a lot of cheats or bots or whatever. Um, a lot of that a lot of that might be applicable to Tarkov, but I don't want to say for certain that it, it's like the be it's like in the beginning in the in the in the Bronze Ages or when you're just getting started, like when you don't have the internal anti cheat, all the tools, everything you need, and th this this stuff takes a long time to build, and everybody in the community is like. It takes a lot of passion at people. That's one thing we haven't talked about. Like, anti-cheat teams are, like, full-time grind dragons. Like, they just, they have, like, they have to be by nature. Like, it requires, like, this constant iterative effort that never goes away. And, like, it's tough. It, like, it, it's, it wouldn't even be possible if they weren't as committed as the cheaters are. Because like, for every like dozen smoking developers, smoking. you've got a thousand yeah, cheaters. Yeah, you're outnumbered. And yeah. they ain't yeah. got bedtimes. And I got a bedtime. I got to be in bed. My wife will get mad at me. You know what I mean? Like, they're, like, cheating in a, <laughs> they're cheating in a basement somewhere. They don't got nowhere to be. So, like, I'm up against, like, they got more resources. Well, they got more, they got more time. So we got to be smart about it. But anyway, there's a couple of key things. Like one is making sure the server has authority, which is a big ask, by the way. It sounds so simple. Just make sure the server is authoritative. But this requires like a lot of checks to everything that's coming from a client. It takes forever to carve all that out. And then there's like a second thing, which is like the network layer. We talked about that before. But once you're making a lot of checks, like it, if your network layer isn't locked down, I don't know if Tarkov is or isn't. But a lot of that is like where they audit for, for exploits. They basically just they're auditing what the server will take as parameters parameters to any function and it gives them like a direct endpoint into finding exploits and it does sound like that might be the case in tarkov based on what i'm hearing but you i mean i'm just guessing um so that would help and then like but that's like if you need that stuff for anti-cheat to really do its best work and like they got the work cut out for them you know like it's it's tough to get it's to even get there by the way like you make a game you don't even know if it's going to be oh no the game's big i guess we got to go back and fix everything because like we had we were on a d tight timeline like g games come out and like they don't get the advantage one like if you're a studio that's making their second or third game sometimes you got enough resources you're given time you can go into r d and go security first mindset but a lot of like games that get popular They've, you know, they ha they didn't they didn't have that luxury is the best way to say it. Yeah, that's where Tarkov so, like, is. It's a, it was a small, inexperienced team that had basically only made browser games before that, and then the game blew up, and now they've got at this point seven years of tech debt that it would it's going to be nearly impossible to 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 do a lot of the stuff you're talking about at it's least. It's not impossible. Yeah. It just, it's a lot. It is like you're cut. You're you're playing from behind, and it's yeah. tough. What like yeah. my goal in drawing a lot of attention to this is to make anti cheat sexy, you know? Because 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 before like you know five I'm not years doing ago, a good job. Like I'm not gonna. <laughs> no, <right? laughs> 
<laughs> Somebody in chat seems to like you. Uh, I read a comment just a minute people ago. People in my chat are calling me oh, the Rizzler so, in here, so I don't know what the hell. <laughs> He's got some Riz. Um, I'm too old yeah, to know we, what we need, we you need, guys are talking about. I want, Someone literally just wrote, he's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> we need anti-cheat um, to be... To have some riz, like I, I, I think because I think people, first of all, they simplify it in their mind. They don't realize. Okay, so I've I've talked to one of uh, somebody that you know. I'll put it that way, and he's Someone he's just like I what know. you said. I like we message each other like every like four hours. <laughs> every four hours, I know something. exactly who it is. <laughs> I'll 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 send him a message and be like, dude, I heard this, and he's like, blah, blah, blah. he's got all these freaking threads and screenshots he's sending me and stuff, and it's like two o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, dude, you're crazy, <laughs> you know? Like he is just he is he, there. There is so much work going on, and I I learned that was like, man, people just don't know this. I people need to see this, like how much work is going on. I agree, and man, I think. Yeah, that's all that there's all that's in it for me and showing up because there's like you notice like a lot of professionals don't it's it's one it's because it does need to remain secretive a lot of the techniques it's difficult to talk it's difficult to say what you can and can't say but like there a lot of AAA studios have teams that are huge that are devoted to this problem and even smaller studios and it's you're like I. I I mean, I'm just gonna show for the grind again. It's I was on it for like a long time, and they're out there. I mean, I don't know how to make it sexy, but they're working as yeah, working yeah, at but least as hard and, as the cheaters are. And I think if people realize the work that goes into it, um, the game studios can um kind of uh bring it into the you know the uh, capitalistic world. Okay, so like, how do I as a consumer value a trusted lobby? Should I pay ten dollars a month? If I'm like hell, dude. They hired nine people. They're doing all this stuff. They're checking my games. They're checking, you know, the files. They're updating their stuff. They're expanding their budget on this. I need to be able to go like, yeah, it is worth that. I am going to pay for that. You know, a game that announces that they're going to try to fix this. It's money, you know? I mean, the monitor. Yeah, they, it is money. And also, I we never talked about this before, but anti cheat is an expensive game that doesn't outright generate revenue, right? You don't you don't know how like if I spend fifteen million dollars on an anti cheat, how much do I get back? And you might not get any. What if the game isn't even popular, right? Like you just, you just blew money. So it's hard. Yeah, it's harder to say. It's like, a running we're... expense. And I will say, always like, going, I was you know, to work with developers that were like, whatever it takes. Like this is the yeah. one. This is the <laughs> so like. That's you know, uh, but other people, like I said, other game studios don't have it. Look, they can't just be like, just spin yeah. everything. No idea you have is too big. Go nuts, right? Yeah, it, it, and um, one of the problems with Tarkov is they don't have reoccurring uh, payments. So you buy the I game, like, and then you just burn cash. Right? You just burn yeah. cash. So if if you buy the fifty dollars version or the hundred fifty dollars version, at some point you are costing the company money by playing the game to keep the servers on, to keep everything running. And so the only solution is to sell more accounts. So like if Tarkov one day said, you know what, we're going to add a, and I don't know if this is the right thing to do. I'm just saying if they add some kind of payment thing or they add some ability to buy cosmetics or something like, and they're like, dude, you guys guys want more quality? You guys want us to fix this? Like not a cosmetic in the game. It's just like a, like a, a cheat detected jacket and every hundred yeah. of proceeds go towards just like hand <laughs> back of the jacket just is like AC rules or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah but it, it's like an, it, it is like a cheat shield that you're able to carry around that, you know, all, all I'm saying <laughs> is that like, you know, people need to understand from a consumer standpoint, like what goes into mm-hmm. it be, because they can't, they can't, um, they have no way of rationalizing, like, if the game company is doing a good job or, or whatever, or, or, or how they should kind of fund it and, and, and view it. And, and I don't think, I don't know if Battlestate is, I don't know their financials, they don't really talk about that stuff, you know, they're not a publicly traded company or anything, they don't have to release their quarter earnings and all that, but I, I imagine it's burning a freaking hole in their pocket trying to, to solve this. And, you know, it's, it's, it, this is something, this is the future, you know, I mean, I, uh, games are going to struggle with this, especially the more hardcore and more complicated they get. It's also hard to know, like, I'll say that they're, they're like shelf product products that are meant to address anti-cheat. I think you said one before, like any brain or whatever, but to get the most out of products like that, that are like supplements, you need, you still need anti-cheat engineers to uh, like, to be able to AB test them, to confirm their accuracy, to find the cases with that, like there are false positives or false negatives and sort of like, they, they still require like sanitization to utilize them so like there's nothing there's not there's nothing you can buy that's just like cheating's gone that doesn't exist yet i i hope maybe one day somebody much smarter than me will invent like skynet that accurately determines whether or not anybody's cheating at all times but it doesn't exist so it's it's a massive investment and so yeah if if the financials aren't there like some product lead somewhere's going to have difficulty signing the check because it's like 
you're, you're, it's a protection of long-term value of players. And if it also, if Tar Tarkov's monetization value, if, if there isn't microtransactions, I think it, given how big of a cash cow those types of monetization models can become, I think it would be difficult to fund a fully fledged anti-cheat effort. I, I, I threw out a number earlier, but like, it, it, anti cheats are expensive. They're expensive. Teams I've of that seen size. Some numbers, I've seen some numbers, and they were more. They like they were a lot bigger than I thought. Uh, yeah. And and I'm sure that all that stuff is in the, like I'm sure Battlelight doesn't discuss publicly what they charge any individual company and all that. It's all very private, hush hush. But it was a lot of money. It was a lot of money from what I saw. I mean, I think even that would dwarf in comparison to an internal anti cheat effort, which is extremely expensive. Yeah, because you're, you're, like, you're probably, yeah. Most of the infrastructure you have to develop yourself, which is there's there's very few pieces of it you can buy. Well, that's what they had before Battle Eye. They had their own homegrown thing that just it just yeah. was insufficient. Yeah, they just don't have the expertise. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know if it is. It could. It, I bet you. I bet you. Like almost every anti cheater knows what to do. Like they they vaguely can be like, okay, we need. But they what they end, what ends up happening is constraints. Like you, you don't you don't you don't you don't get to go. With, I don't, I'm just trying to give credit where credit is due. A lot of a lot of them grind, um, and like a lot of the constraints placed on them are to limit what they're able to do. And a lot of those constraints are like come at you in weird ways. Like I again, I worked with game leadership that was super willing to call, like I could be like we're no longer supporting Windows Vista, and they'd be like. How many, people, like, what's the percentage of players? And I'd be like, one. And they're like, good riddance. And I'm kidding. Obviously, we did analysis to determine, like, the tenability of upgrading, like, you know, the, based on the region. But they were willing to, to take the risks, right? Uh, other anti-cheat developers, probably even the ones working on Tarkov, are, like, surprisingly limited in what they're able to do. But they probably know what to do. It's just like you got to the business cases end up being the, honestly my like the last five years of my career have mostly been trying to create business cases for like hardware at a station and like and like uh, minimum operating system requirements like just proving that these things are not worth it and that players will opt in like pro like proving on paper that players will opt in to a more competitive experience. And, is and, and I find Tarkov to be one of the most hardcore like FPS shooters that's ever existed. It, it, the per performance on the game requires the latest hardware to even get like 60 frames. And the idea that in this environment, you couldn't get people to run, you know, like a, a, a processor made after like 20 or something you know it's like come on like i mean this is the one case where i think you could be more brutal with some of those standards um yeah no so i should I, consider yeah, that I, I guess they have played tarkov but i yeah i i agree that like for competitive games i personally as a player would opt in to like the highest competitive standard i think a lot of a lot of highly competitive players would and maybe that's one of the reasons like these conversations are worth like having finally i mean we've been si like not we've been silent for years there's there's publishing beats where we've tried to be a little louder but like, it's coming to be like if the players themselves can like, we need this stuff. Do this stuff. Like that would make that would make my job yeah. two years ago easier. And and it's one of the things you know. It, 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 if I say it, people are like, okay, cool, that's great, man, that's great. Go go goat. You're awesome. But hearing somebody who 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 is who is in the top of their field. Um, say these things matters more it matters more and that's you know that's why we're doing this but on a technical level i'm middle of the pack i swear to god i'm mostly i'm just uh <laughs> i'm a better orator and i have nicer hair like that's about <laughs> the only thing but for a, like like from a developer standpoint i would say um you know i've been around a minute sure <laughs> honestly so i'll, I'll say you're asking what they need to do they need to they need resources that's probably what they need I mean, yeah. I can kind of point at a few techniques they need to implement at a bare minimum, which they're probably already prioritizing. I bet you. Um, but I'm like, send an email. Uh, no, I, <laughs> but like, yeah, I bet you it's a, it's a resource problem, and like, they don't they're like not willing to take risks in this area. And, and I, I think like it's clear. I don't think it's it's a mystery to Tarkov that cheating's like a problem for them. They probably yeah. have a sink every morning. No, I'm pretty sure they know after today. Goat's video got like two and a half million views. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure they know it's a problem now. <laughs> so speaking of 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 cheaters and some of the the downsides of cheating from a you know personal standpoint, I got boot nuked. Um, Get owned. And so, about that. can you tell me some stories? What are some of the dangers of fucking around with some of this uh, malware? Uh, essentially, that you're uh, that, that you're intentionally you, you've got to have some war stories. Oh, I do. I just can't talk about any of them. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, give me hypotheticals or just you know things I that maybe can't. you haven't been involved in. 
Um, I mean, yeah, we've lost host. I mean, that person we were talking about before, which I assume everybody knows now, is uh, is the beloved uh, gamer doc. Um, he, I didn't he's say probably. It. I mean, he's well. He's tenacious, right? And he he works for every community, not just not just uh, yeah. not just the most popular games. But he's he's all over the place, and and he's got to have a lot of he's got to have a suite of computers at his disposal to, to test and dump all these cheats. And I mean, he's probably lost more devices than you and I combined. <laughs> like, it, not just because like the developers uh, you know determined it was him and made did it deliberately, but also like the modifications you have to make to your system to run them aren't super stable sometimes. Um, but yeah, there's, 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 that has happened to a lot of, I've had stuff happen where like, God, nope, can't talk about it. I'm sorry. But it, it, is it, I mean, if you had to rate it on like a safe or not safe scale. And uh, here's, oh, see, here's the thing, dude, like, here's the thing, all the, all the. You're basically the... hopping on some guy's botnet. You're, you're, you're caving portions of your operating system so that like their software can run at an escalated tier. And like in the cheater's mind, it's like anything to cheat. But like th they have everything at that point. I've, I've I've definitely seen like when I was in the cheating community, we would have we would have like user databases where we were exfiltrating everything we could off of. And I was actually against this, but like they would just exfiltrate every all the player information they could when the cheat was running. And this was in user mode. Now players are like. Like I said, corrupting portions of Windows signing verifications to load some guy's surface service so that they can just like allow him to take in, and they they do him or her they take control of every like control but they have unrestricted access to everything. I I heard I mean, a story lawyers, where lawyers or borders or like a or like a boss that's telling them not to fuck up they don't have any of that stuff <laughs> quality control yeah. they don't they, they don't have just a hate pipeline it. for confirming that their cheat works they don't have like a <laughs> massive like build pipeline for their product like to the to the same you know like that my, an anti cheat might have and they're trying to do the same techniques they have pinup aggression and hate basically and, and and vengeance too so like I, I I've heard stories this is stories I've heard um, where you take them down and they just uh brick like every computer that was you running the cheat um i've heard things like that um i i know that like the the way that they got into my system was using uh the hardware driver um protocol or something exploit and that's how they were able to get to my hard drives it was only my m.3 or, or my m.2.0s uh, my, my my other hard drives were fine and they got all three of them in one night and one day. I was like, that's odd. Like, <laughs> and, and it was while I was live in Discord, too, so, so that they could watch me go down. So they they were not happy with me. <laughs> and I, I had all these security people contact me telling me, <laughs> dude, take your take take your motherboard out of your computer. Take everything. Uh lock your network down and like of course I've I've done I'm not gonna talk about what I've done on my on my front, but I've done a lot of things lately. Uh but they're 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 vengeful too, you know. This is the stuff that uh, like everybody wants I mean, to talk about how profitable you. cheating is or or how profitable cheat development is. I wish more people would talk about how much at risk you're putting yourself and your network yeah. when you install the cheats. I, I mean, mean you're, you're... I don't think anybody's surprised to find that cheat developers don't have your best interests at heart. Like, I, no, think... I mean, I don't think that many people actually think about it. They don't. They don't think that that. They have no, you know, it's like when you go to buy meth and you get, and the guy just takes your money and then doesn't give you the meth. You don't get to go to the cops. Well, that's called an exit scam. It's one of my favorite. You just like drum up. This was great, by the way. <laughs> if you got a bit of a reputation, you can release vaporware for cheats. Just one more. You can go have one more go at it. Be like, updates coming, guys. Just keep your subscriptions active. Yep. See, and that's <laughs> the thing. How many, how many people will say... Come back hey. under a new username. It's all anonymous. Who cares? Yeah, this is unde uh, undetectable. Uh, we've never been detected, even though everybody on you know on the forums was just said, "Hey, we just got banned for this super expensive cheat," and now you're gonna have a sale on the you, cheat. Like you're you putting yourself right at risk when you cheat, and that's something that more people need to fucking know is how much at risk you are. I, that will do more for anti cheating than a lot of the things that the we're talking about. Banned. Than just getting your account well, banned. about opting into more secure environments. I mean, cheaters are opting out of that deliberately. That's kind of the crux of the argument. Like they're opting into less secure and and corrupting those even to load their like load some cheats driver. Like 
That, and that, I mean, one, like when, like, say, for example, you're, you turn off secure boot, you're vulnerable to boot kits. You're loading some guys, like, you're loading some uh, someone else's drive. They might be loading a valid driver, you know, doing the old, like, this one has a valid cert so that I can, but they're probably not. They're probably disabling, like, cert signing so they can load any driver, which means anything can load any, any driver. And they're already and morally like, questionable. <laughs> right. <laughs> And, and and they ask for your two forms of ID and your social security number, and they have your credit card information probably on so file. They know, they know you your live. name, and they know, yeah, they're going to, like, they could blackmail you. They they could do all kinds of crazy yeah. shit. I mean, they could sell your all your information to a third party for money. That's how, dude, that's how that one dude FOV got found. The uh, the guy said he just, he told him he needed to pay him if he was going to keep it from hitting, like, public, whatever, and the dude didn't pay him, so then he got buried, and all of a sudden he stopped streaming. Because he paid to get killa kills. Wait, was, was that like, was that confirmed? Dude, I never followed yeah, the, that. Yeah, the guy the guy that took the money from him basically was like, yeah, he just he wouldn't pay me to keep quiet. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, and there's a lot of like the login of details, everything. I, I, yeah, I mean. I, I mean, you wouldn't be surprised to find that most cheaters that are operating at scale collect user information to try to determine what if those players are like, especially if they're selling something that's undetected, they want to know who the players are that are in their ecosystem as to give them a chance at identifying whether or not it's an anti cheat developer. So the stuff they're collecting would probably surprise you. Like, it's in, in a lot of cases, it's a lot of data. Um, and, and a lot of it in very poor formats. I just have to say, as a data scientist, the, the, the text formats they dream, the flat file formats that anti cheat or cheaters create to ship data back to themselves is appalling. Look like, at the UI like, of the cheats. It makes me want to puke. Yeah, you guys. Dude. Suck. No, <laughs> that, yeah. that last one that they, uh, that they were pushing out to replace, uh, well, ABS is replacing that old, the, the first one that, that got caught, the replacement the, one. Oh, the GeoCities like, website? The Dude, that was the most sus piece of software. Just from yeah. like the, the the launcher alone, I was like, you guys are just taking your entire lives in your own hands like, using that shit. You launch Ain't that no website, yeah. you're going to get pop-ups that are going to say, Windows support has detected a thing, then, your computer's locked down. And then dudes are like... Oh, you're just you're just propagating cheat software. You're advertising for them. I'm like, bro, if you install that, like, you deserve everything you get. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you can go to ABS website right now and buy the one that's been shut down for like two or three weeks, and they'll take your money and they will not give it back to you unless you do like a chargeback or something. I talked to the reseller when stuff went down. I said, "Are you gonna re are you gonna refund everybody?" And he's like, "Yeah, we'll refund everybody that bought it today or yesterday." I was like, "Yeah, but people buy it a week at a time." Like, you better refund. And then they, they were allowing people to buy it in advance with it being down. And they, they just took all the money and ran. I mean, it's like it, it's it's just criminal from a customer service, like stealing your money standpoint, not 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 hijacking your computer, you know, and everything else they, that that they do. I'll say, OK, when I was OK. My cheats all had a had a backdoor bot, ERC botnet, which was the common thing to do in 2008, 2009, or whatever. We used it to issue like remote commands to the people that were cheating. We we would use it to like have them all ping a location as a form of like DDoSing, which was pretty. You could just kick somebody off the internet for the lols. But this is all like so this is this is like old stuff, and this is like before we needed to corrupt the whole computer to do it now you just like uh, farm bitcoin right for them or like yeah. <laughs> i would have i would have back then if that had been a thing yeah. <laughs> like I, 2012 you, you get kind you of wouldn't bored. be working on this shit right uh, now no i mean i accepted we 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 did get to the point where we were only accepting payment of bitcoin because the developers uh could pretty effectively um report your like in your paypal uh accounts to paypal and they would close them so eventually bitcoin became the only thing you could utilize so yeah, just key we, log them a couple a couple of ex cheaters got kind of lucky because we only had bitcoin wallets and it was like oh no it's why is, why is it worth so much um but yeah they uh we, we were exfiltrating a lot and i did we did we did actually like start issuing remote commands usually just to ddos our friends like we were kind of dumb but like also to we also like at any time could utilize their client to advertise the cheat and we did like the idea that like cheat develop like i said they don't have your best interests at heart and i think somebody also brought up like what what's different between an anti-cheat team and the chat like they also operate at that level they're not corrupting windows to do it and we have to like the, the, we're not in the you're, denial you're actively to not doing that or trying not to <laughs> well we don't want to crash so you, anything but also like, we have like yeah. massive the teams we have massive privacy teams that are like have been spun up around the concerns surrounding like 
uh, you know, the the integrity, like how like PII and right to be forgotten and all that stuff. So we really don't hold on to anything for any amount of time. We can't like we're like. Yeah, also, it's too risky. No company wants like they're de like honestly, companies are like delete everything, like just so that they don't if they get caught, they don't want to be in trouble. They don't know what to keep, so it's easier to just delete everything. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess that there is a risk installing cheats. I guess is the don't do yeah. it. Yeah, or if you yeah. So tell us, kind of um, you know. There's this sentiment, okay? This is the sentiment that I get when I read comments and, and questions, which, of course, is the best source of information on the internet. Um, but the sentiment is cheaters will always exist. With more technology, they're going to win in the end. Can you kind of give me, a, you know, if you had to stick your finger up in the wind and lick your finger and kind of feel the wind and, and kind of give me an idea, do you think all this this AI technology um, just technology in general. Um, I'm fine it, with one. It advances cheater. in Windows. I'm fine with one cheater being able to cheat on like yeah, not yeah. nobody knowing he's doing it. For the record, most anti cheat would be fine with that because that means that they're playing within the parameters that another other players don't know, and like that means usually that they don't have much of a competitive advantage. They're not selling it, right? It's just them for their own for their own micro aimbot or whatever. That's probably like the lowest priority. The most important thing is that cheating isn't a business. You've seen what happens when that happens. So like yeah. that's what anti cheat teams are trying to prevent. That it isn't it isn't marketing. Large swaths profitable. of people. Correct. You know, thousands some, upon some, thousands logging in. My lowest concern is some enterprising kid that like manages to develop a like a, a image classification model that kind of updates aim and keeps it only to him like an image classification model is like we you know a lot of cheats are we should probably talk, cover that actually that cheats have kind of gone external but anyway it's like the it's like the tiniest advantage and it's like they're not selling it to nobody and it but by the time it pops under our radar like it's it's such a low priority right but that's the thing where that we take the action the slowest on. I, it's actually the thing that typically it's not that anti cheat teams don't care. It's just the lowest risk, or it has the the lowest severity. So yeah, like, and I'm in that same boat as as a player. You know, I don't know how how you how one peg and Veritas feel, but I'm in the same boat. I would rather you go after the big businesses with 20,000 30,000 people cheating at one time also anti-cheaters are upset when like anybody gets to make money off of a cheat like it's like them why not me and then they just <laughs> when you when you take out like a like a, like let's say like you detect uh you know a 1500 player group or whatever and like you just you hit the button like somebody like is there like a ceremony where you're like all right here we go like and then you blast them, and then you yeah, guys like okay. walk around like high five each other, like you just got a huge drug bust. Hell yeah! Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean we have for the ceremony, ceremony and stuff. Like when you finally get like a cheat that's been playing a, a game too long, that stuff gets rarer when you're in the late game. Not to like y the iteration gets so quick that like you don't see cheats of that size where that kind of thing happens. But when it does come up, we do make a bit of a ceremony out of it. Out of it. Like pre-COVID, we would you know bought a USB button and like had our boss come over and hit it or what. It's like whoa, it's been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean like, they're anti cheaters are people too. Obviously, they have fun. You you mentioned yeah, so, so go ahead. Uh, you mentioned cheating as a business. Um, one of the biggest things in in that's been discussed in the world of Tarkov is sorry, they're for the guitar. Somebody's asking about the, the I I these are not for show, and I I play finger style. Oh yeah, yes I make nails. Um, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. Okay, yeah, <laughs> sorry. So so you mentioned cheating as a business. One of the things in Tarkov um that's you know discussed a lot and controversial and problematic to whatever degree is real money trading hmm. either in terms of people cheating to be able to farm items you know a game that has an economy a global economy like tarkov to be able to farm the items and sell the items or carrying other players as in i'm going to go and kill everybody and i'm going to tell you where all the good stuff is you just follow me around um i wonder what kind of like what's the relationship from anti-cheat to it's, those kinds of behaviors if there is like a relationship tree. we no, we did i mean like i don't want to say we did. it typically does end up in the anti-cheat purview once you've like matured as a team like the, the things start to be like ways look like i said cheaters will do anything to cheat the way that like when you're accurately detecting all cheats that'll start to be like queuing with a cheater until they're banned to rank up right so you end up having to find those avid those little pockets that players are trying to eke out value in um 
like I, I'm referring to like duo queuing in a game where you partner with a cheater. We had to determine the amount of ranked gain that you had gained from playing with one. There's actually tweets and stuff about this. So like it, it is a topic we can talk about. Like Riot, um, when I worked at, they took that really seriously, like that, that particular type of offense. So we were able to take action on that. You would pay a cheater to cheat for you, that kind of thing. It's, um, and then you also end up like, I don't know if this is part of your question, but like paying somebody to play for you. Um, or like boosting. We some of that. Boosting. So yeah. Like a boosting service. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way back at the beginning, way back in my career, I tried to develop some tech using the hardware fingerprinting to determine the likelihood that a player had shared their account. Could you imagine how much easier that would be if people had to attest their hardware? Just saying. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, we uh yeah you you end up with like cursory markets that are like ways to use cheats that you know are detected because most of them are so like a lot of that is join me i'll show you where everything is give me a fiver that kind of thing in tarkov i guess because i'm assuming there's mats now i it's surprising how little i know about this game i there's, watched there's like, loot there's loot Tar okay tarkov is extremely lucrative every every cheat dev that i have had the pleasure of interacting with has said it's been the most lucrative thing to make money off of as a cheat developer or somebody that sells for like money of any game that they have ever bothered dealing in with because of because of the um the sense of loss and like the perception of value because of that sense of loss and there's no ranked lobby there's so, so, the, so right. there so there's no skill based lobby so you are yeah, queued no, with no everybody SBMM. So it's not oh. like you work your way up in skill value. You're always in the same lobby with everybody. It's like an MMO kind of in that in that sense. For the most part, if you die in this game, everything that you everything that you get killed with is lootable. So if you find really valuable stuff, relatively rare stuff, and you die with it, somebody else can take it off your corpse. Gotcha. Yeah, dude. Okay, so that I mean, cheating in that game would be like I mean, it's it's, it's, it's outrageous. Yeah. It's not just isolated to one game. It affects like loot out of the game. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, and and so Cycle Frontier, which is a similar <laughs> kind of game, they have they're starting to return loot back to the person when they ban a cheater and the you know, they log it all and they let you know. And I think Tarkov is going to implement a system where you get notified. So so you're not even notified now when a, when a cheater gets banned in one of your lobbies. But if they can do some back end work and return stuff, that that will be a step in like it's kind of like returning rank. I swear right? to God, you are talking to somebody on the side. That's because you sound like a person I know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, so like eventually, when we talk about fruit of the poisonous tree, like people that find ways to cheat with cheaters that are detected, you have to find a way to undo that damage. So return items to players who had them taken from by a cheater, return rank to players who lost it to a cheater, um, rollbacks is basically mm -hmm. the ask. Um, and that's like for the for the but that's like once you have the ability to detect cheating, we're talking like way into the future for some teams. But yes, that is um, that was what I was that was what I was having to get into towards the like the, you know Riot's been at it for ten years. That was like kind of where we were getting we were getting into the spot where like we could detect cheats. Like we knew how to, we were the best we were fast. We were the best at we could detect not in, not all of them were instant. Some you know, but the time to detection was really low. So the all the behaviors are just that that like partnering with a cheater or trying to find ways to get value out of an account that you know will be detected that was 99 percent of our like uh, of like our day-to-day -day. um boosting bussing bussing is like when you queue with a cheater or like uh or like trying to <laughs> develop systems that allowed us to remove the damage that a cheat had done um and I, yeah that's it. like i said on this topic i, I want to quickly read a, a tweet um, that had 8.6 million views on this tweet, and uh, I just want to see your reaction, what, what you think to this. Imagine, okay. imagine trying to extract with an item you discovered worth $100,000 on the blockchain. Think about the entertainment value as a viewer, let alone the player. A new <laughs> PvP experience is upon us. What is really? that? So, I, I think I think are 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 you referring to the idea of having tweet. like NFTs? Uh, like like there's it's it's, there it's Doctor Disrespect. <laughs> yeah, it's his game that is ostensibly He's a game called Dead Drop. It, it's it's an extraction looter shooter where there's some amount of NFT related no, items value. Yes, items, items have value on the blockchain as NFTs in some cases. So I'm is sure what he's been pushing. So I guess what I what I want to know is, does that just make you cringe internally? 
For as, what? Like the idea that items have like value? how do you no, ensure no, no, no. that it, someone with that item wouldn't a, get a multiplayer by a PvP and have it taken? A multiplayer PvP oh. game where where your success is potentially worth now I I don't think something like that would ever actually be worth a hundred thousand no. dollars. But but even if it's a hundred dollars, well, like you've raised the stakes of any of coming across the cheat. I mean, you said it best, but you've raised the stakes of coming across a cheater. So I'd hope any initiative like that. Also, even with a really low time to detection, if you don't ship with like the ability to detect and the ability to roll that back, nobody's going to invest any money in those items. Like I would not feel safe having my like I would not feel safe having invested in an item that I could have taken from me by somebody cheating. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, or like, or like having such a reward a like that's snatched from you on the way out or something. I like mean, otherwise, I, you, you would have won with it, but then, like, you know, did Cheater Billy, like, in between games of beer pong, decided that he was going to snipe you from across the map and take your cash, because, yeah. like, they're not going to give a shit. Like, I just made a hundred grand. Fuck him. I mean, I think he, he can go buy Legos or something with it, you know? When, like, I would, I would imagine that would be reflected in the price of the item, like, or the price of the NFT, because it would, like, the trust you have in that as a monetary vehicle would be decreased. Well, um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would argue in, right. in, in, in a system where cheaters are sniping these things, they're not going to be worth ever that much money because no one it, it's never going to have that value because of how yeah. the market's tainted by like, people would you, cheating. In that case, would you focus more? I mean, obviously, you would need the cheat detection. But in terms of enforcement, would you focus more on making sure that the accuracy of the ability to roll something back would be like priority like one or like one a well, if detection is one can you roll it back if it's truly a blockchain like and it's distributed the way that it is i don't know maybe like you'd have to delay the reward right <laughs> like you would have to go into a queue for verification or something like what else are you gonna do like other than just not fucking doing it because that's really the answer because i think the idea of doing something like this is like completely asinine because you just created the most profitable cheating like endeavor ever known to man well, I don't know if it's, if it's like it's profitable to cheaters, if, but I, I honestly think if cheating was pervasive, it would just drive the value down. But if you like assuming that it is an NFT and that the value is just in the ledger for for them is decentralized, can you roll them back? Uh, so well, that's a, that's, that, that's a, yeah, that's a that's separate. If they cash out quickly, if they cash out that hour, well, like what, what are you going to do? do it, if it's not immediately rewarded and it's just like, I guess you'll have to get you know, into placeholder or something. I can't. hardware attestation yeah trusting devices uh yeah i mean that's what you gotta i mean you have to get into the preemptive game you gotta know you can trust anybody that's engaging like entering the network or entering the um the, the, that can buy or acquire these items um i don't think you can do it in post like a lot of detection products like the ones that i've worked on operate on a delay they wouldn't be sufficient to enforce like to give to have sufficient integrity in the game to make those items retain their value like when you, if you were to convert them to a fiat currency. So quickly, you kind of brought this up earlier. Uh, there was a video recently where a guy is talking about image um, based, you know, you refer to it as like, basically it's not on your, on your computer, it's, it, it's external. And it uses the image on your screen and you can use AI to make your aim better and blah, blah, blah. And then the solution is some kind of AI, you know, video, uh, you know, we, we've kind of talked about the the companies, you know, trying to do that right now. Uh, did you want to talk about that? It, 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 what do you think about the future of that? What AI? I mean, like what AI in what capacity? I, it wasn't specific enough. So there, there was the any brain, and then there's Waldo, um, whatever it's called. Uh, I don't, uh, so I, like I said, like, like the the high level is that I think they're supplements to existing anti cheats. That's my personal view on them today. Like maybe one day they'll take off and perfectly from like they'll be. One of the things I'm worried about is like you have to get as close to the person to fingerprint them behaviorally as you can, and eventually that requires that like either you're sending a ton of telemetry to the server and then validating it, or you're on the host itself. And if you're on the host itself. Cheaters are going to have their way with whatever way you're trying to exfiltrate anything. You'll be vulnerable to replay attacks. They might black hole your <clears> traffic. <throat> they might like just not bother submitting inputs in the way that you consider typical. They'll stop using a keyboard and mouse. They'll start submitting controller input. Maybe they'll start using bananas like some of those other kids do. Like they're going to start changing the way they like. But like that's they haven't had they haven't been around enough to know where their endpoint's going to sit to egress the the per, like the behavior the true the closest thing you can get to the player right. Um, and I don't know, it, there's going to be, need to be some maturity there to actually get the information in a way that you can rely upon because that's going to get attacked. And then you're going to have to have a way. And I, 
even if it was perfect, you'd still need evidence to take action in a lot of... You can't ban... Like, you, you're not compelled to do business with people. Like, you don't have to, like, allow a person to play a game. But you can't, like... You, you, you can't, um... Like, you wouldn't have the proof necessary to take action on pros or to defend yourself if that, if like in a consumer court in a, you know, some of the regions that have them could, could compel you to enter court. Like, I, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't me. You would, you would need proof of that. It, like, I didn't cheat. You'd need proof that they did. And like, I don't think a model predicting that you did is sufficient evidence in those cases yet. But it is, it's great stuff. Like, it, it, it kind of allows you to prioritize your efforts on demographics of accounts because it can start to like a lot of like what AI is typically used for is like getting eyes on the right stuff at the That's what we used it for. That's where um, a lot of those technologies are right now, anyway. Like, you, the people when they use. AI generated art or like stuff like mid uh like mid journey or chat GPT a lot of it is at least currently supplemental you know people will generate something and then photoshop it or you know they'll they'll use AI to generate like an email and then they'll go through and edit it um I think that's like what you were talking about it would be supplemental until some yeah, future I mean, point well, yeah, where like, it's more well, robust and reliable chat GPT to like extend your your <laughs> i mean what i use it for is to inspiration i use it as a massive search inspiration no i i throw like i'll throw articles into it and get them to summarize i don't i don't got time for this like it's it's great for when it's used to supplement something but it's not it's not quite to the and maybe it'll be there someday i'm not like against ai or anything it's just not in my experiences so far it is not there yet um, both because of the burden of proof placed on a developer when they suspend an account, and also because when you like when you go to train these things, you often need anti cheats anyway, so it doesn't eliminate the need for one. So if you're gonna bother, if you're gonna bother, aren't you going to use the you're gonna use like the explicit information from it also? And then finally, the like trying to get as close as you get like a lot of those products haven't quite sorted out how they're going to apply to everything in a way that doesn't allow them to be attacked. Because if you're putting if you're putting code on a cheater's machine, it's gonna get fucked with like it's is and i don't think some of those products are in the maturity where they're like realizing that um and that's for the like the peripheral based ones when you're talking about just screen reading stuff i genuinely don't believe there's enough information there to do it yet. yeah do it they're going as far to say that they can watch your gameplay and ban you within five minutes if you're cheating Blow my and and have all this What's data on you i want to know the recall i want to know like how many yes. cheaters yeah. yeah well i mean it, it, like, and 30 percent of cheating with no false positives within like five yeah like, that and, might be but if they're saying all cheaters no here's the yeah, thing yeah that'd be bullshit and and, no and, it, and it gets better they they say that they that they can have all this data on you and if you go create a new account they'll be able to have a fingerprint of you and ban you when you go to create another account because they're gonna know it's you based on the data matching of how you play the game. They would need, wouldn't they need hundreds and, and hundreds and hundreds of hours of- Listen, I'm not, I'm not making this, uh, I'm not making this shit up. So, so there is a video that is going around and I'm actually in the video being interviewed about something unrelated. So I'm a little salty. So that's why I'm kind of bringing it up. But <laughs> hey, I think, um, <laughs> Uh, they, the video was not portrayed as that was what was going to be talked about. So I, I'm a little salty, but I do, I do think that maybe someday, 20 years from now, some of this stuff will be reality. J just like everything we thought about 20 years ago was no, a year from now. It's not going to, I just, I just think the, the video was portrayed as this is like right around the corner and this is the solution and all that. And so yeah, I, um, I genuinely don't think it is. I mean, I think it'll, it'll start to be able to take action on accounts. Like it will probably with a hundred percent, but like the recall is going to be really low. It'll be like the most egregious cheating. Which it, it, again, it would be like new world bots, you know, they're running around doing like chopping trees down. Like that kind of stuff to me is like, that's like low hanging fruit. I think, yeah, you can look at that and be like, that's a bot behavior. But um, yeah, well, like yeah high, high level actually, cheating, bots, you know. Bots are an application of models where you can usually get really high recall. Cause you got a, you got a big old window to look at. The, the behavior doesn't, you don't have a, you don't, you're not forced to take action quickly. Like you don't need to get a cheater out of the game. A bot is like, oh, I saw it, I reported it or whatever. The, the severity of the behavior is so low that you can get a good window. And again, with a larger window, your accuracy is increased sufficiently. So in my experience, modeling is probably one of the key ways we've tackled bots. Um, it's also really, you know, you got to like keep them up to date. There's, there's drift and stuff, but it's one of the key, um, it's one of the key ways that you can address botting. It's far harder to, to, to address like players taking specific actions with automation. Um, this ties back fact, like real hard. Th this ties back to, to something I, I wanted to ask earlier. I forgot about, um, 
as this technology progresses, it's going to be imperfect. Um, which means just like with Tarkov and the manual bans, uh, you know, that, uh, that definitely ensue or have ensued, um, as How someone get on stream and talk for like three i am like i am my mouth is dry <laughs> like i don't I'm know ready to go to bed. you gotta go I'm for you waiting. gotta go for 14 hours straight six days a week my dude oh. that's God, i can never... stream in 36 hours a day every day you're a casual people wonder why some, sometimes it's hard for me to get to the point and spit it out it's a lot of times because i'm just fucking tired um but yeah, I'm so i've been at it for two hours but anyway sorry clear thought so <laughs> there's gonna be false bans in all kinds of different games and platforms, and the fact of the matter is, is that, at least in the case of of Battle Eye and Tarkov, it's notorious for false bans again, um, and having like zero appeals process. You end up in an email black hole where nobody responds to your emails. You spend one hundred fifty dollars on a game that you were potentially false banned on. Is there anything anybody can do to protect or defend themselves against false banning, like? Or are you just at the whim? Uh, just to give the developers perspective, every cheater says they didn't cheat. Well, so, like, absolutely. Like, yeah. But, and but, they, but like, when you have about... when you have streamers that that we know weren't cheating because we know why they were cheated, and they and the developers admit that they were falsely banned as a part of ban waves that might have included That's... hundreds or thousands of people. There's no way that you can tell me that there weren't false bans that weren't cheaters that. You know I what I mean? I mean, they weren't streamers. Stop yelling at me. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very upset about it. There's not really, like, no, there's not a way to protect yourself. I, I've falsely banned people. It took me a while to get good. Like, I mean, That's Tarkov rough. is kind of in its infancy in the anti-cheat way, in the ways that, like, again, they didn't have the advantage of being, like, a massive student, like, uh, like having money and getting to throw it at the problem, uh, it, it, preface, prefacing the game with, like, we're building the best anti-cheat or whatever, you know? like They, they actively avoided it until they had no choice. Yeah, they're, like, trying to attach wings to the plane, and it's it's mid-flight, you know? Like, they, they got resource, and also they got a budget, and it doesn't, it doesn't sound like there's microtransactions fueling that budget. So, like... Think about it. I mean, I'm not saying like empathize with, you know, <laughs> but like I'm not going to bash what I what I know is going on behind the scenes. It's probably a very stressed person that is like managed to get a model in the test set that like oh, identifies like the and, you know, they're trying to do the best they can. But no, th th that's a very loaded question. What can you do to defend yourself against false positives? I nothing really. <laughs> so, I mean, like I, I know I know of at least one case where somebody who wasn't a streamer then the only reason why again streamers are is relevant okay, is because I, you have to against false positives. I, I have a few. Enable MFA. If a service has MFA, enable it so that somebody can't take your account and you don't have to claim that your brother did it. Or That's multi-factor authentication. <laughs> mfa to a yes get very important by like you should have this on every service you have to be clear password if it's, if it's available to you use it i think the adoption rates are also abysmal on every game i've worked on it like it's so hard to give you you can give you can like, give you like will immediately make you diamond you just please enable it and nobody will <laughs> like the idea of having to open a browser or we'll like complete your bitcoin you know, farm so do that but also like a lot of false positives come about as a result of like cheating in other games and so you could just not cheat in other games like that's something you could do um this is again in my experience uh and also like you know uh yeah those are probably the main two well, and, and a little history like i created a video a long time ago where i caught a friend cheating and um i kind of did like a video on how how i did that and um i for like the next year got like 15 emails a day of people who weren't cheating and half the time I would go to their profile and I like go on their twitch I'm like you were you're streaming your cheats like I had one yesterday I, I at, the, at, at the beginning of this stream I looked into this guy's twi uh, twitch he by the way he deleted all his vods after I uh, started talking about it but I uh, downloaded everything and I pulled it up and it's like he's he's using ESP it's like you know and um so what's tough is like there's a handful of people that weren't cheating and it really sucks i was on the i was on the end of that as well because i had a motherboard that didn't report unique serial numbers so they I did a hardware ban dm me about that yeah so ago. i my serial number matched somebody who was using the same motherboard and it was like thousands of us so you know they were able to figure it out like you know but you know it just sucks and i i think it's kind of like a necessary evil at some point um Speaking of that, I've got a little birdie in my ear who really wants to ask you about uh, DMA hardware detection. Um, the cheaters, a lot of cheaters in Tarkov use DMA devices, which 
for uh, you lay people that aren't fancy with all this lingo. They're, 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 they're a separate, you know, device running on another computer that, in, that intercepts the memory and is able to do stuff off your computer. The fact um, there, I, there is an article on this that I, but okay, it's, DMA refers to direct memory. And what they're doing is they're utilizing a specialized piece of hardware to read the physical memory of the device and exfiltrate it to another machine for post-processing. They usually use this to do like ESPs. Sometimes they actually, they can do aimbots too because they can get the positional data of the character and issue. But oftentimes it's a company, to do that, it's a, like they'll use like an Arduino or something to submit per peripheral input back to the host that's playing the game. But like- For Tarkov, anyway, it's radar is the common one. Yeah, yeah, so they, they're they they're basically egressing all of the machine, uh, all of the machine's memory, and then they have a process on another machine that's combing it to determine where the structures in memory are that contain player positions. And then they're probably on that machine itself, do they have like a web server or something? Is that the- Like they, yes, probably, they yeah. probably point their browser at a server that that thing's hosting to render a radar on another monitor. Usually on a, 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 a second PC, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I'll just say that's it's tough to I. I mean, I think I say this in the thing, but we just straight hired the guy that had a technique to detect it. <laughs> like it's it's tough because like, when you get into the hardware stuff, the number of people that un, like have the under I don't I don't know the first thing about how to detect it. So I found a guy smarter than me that could. But again, I had the budget to do that so so wait yeah. okay wait so you're you, are you saying oh because man the, the the whole idea of of thinking that you could have let's say a second pc that's like man in the middle grabbing the network packets decrypting it and then displaying on a second pc and a browser a mini map with dots how the hell like that to me seems undetectable just fundamentally unless you like that seems I, to me I, well, impossible. I can't, talk about how, I can't talk about how, but obviously there's like, but there, there is, ways to prevent, there are ways to prevent this, like, and well, to prevent it, like yeah. encryption and all kinds of others. Okay, but not. Oh, okay. There, there's also, I mean, like, this is something that I can't even get into the techniques for, because one, like, I don't have the technical <laughs> background to do it, but also, like, it's highly proprietary. But like, he a lot of the can't tell you. <laughs> Okay, so what do you think about the fact that the the cheat that I used in Tarkov, um, they required me to uh, uninstall any Riot game and and not have Vanguard running for it for it to work? What, what what's going on there? Why 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 do I have to uninstall Vanguard to run an EFT cheat in a game that's uh, you know a completely different game? That's a good question. So like, I mean, there's a chance that they're worried. I mean, I doubt this is it. They're probably worried that like Vanguard could detect it, but like, admittedly, you'd have to be. And I, it, it won't let it start. Work, I, I, um, I don't know if it detects it, but I think it doesn't work. Like, it just won't run. Um, that's a good question. I, I can only guess. I mean, like, Vanguard does prevent certain things from loading, especially if, like, it's a, if it's a driver that doesn't have a valid cert. And so if you have Vanguard installed, we might prevent that from happening. We here being Riot. I don't work there anymore, but, yeah. They might prevent that from happening. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and and the one thing that's different about uh, Vanguard's cheat is like, with uh, you can call them less invasive cheats, however you want to put it. Um, you can reboot the computer essentially and get ahead of it. And, and this is my dumb way of of of, of interpreting. It. So correct me how I'm, I'm thinking of this wrong. But you can reboot the computer and get ahead of the cheat, where Vanguard's is like, no, we're going to be there at all times. Yeah, well, that's that gets into the argument about why we load like. I, don't, I, mean, I gotta stop saying we. It's it's been a while. Uh, okay, well that like a lot of anti cheats that do load first, like load when the system does, are trying to make sure that they're the first thing there, so that they can confirm like none of, like all the system variables that like one of which happens to be like confirming that this like secure boot is on that we can trust that there isn't like that a boot kit that, that there isn't a boot kit. Um, so yeah, like getting there first is important because we can like look at the time that we loaded and like when the operating system did and like make sure that nothing else got in between us. Um, that and that's like anti cheats that take that. And honestly, that's like not like I, I'd be I'd be surprised to find that a lot of stu like studios had the appetite for that type of thing, like loading on demand um, or loading on boot instead of on demand. Uh, but yeah. That's it's it's trying to it's trying to give you the best shot, and I'm I'm sorry for the things all the things I can't say and how upset everybody is, but like um, it's to give you the best shot at like identifying uh, whether or not the system has been tampered with. That's the whole point.
Yeah. And there are, there's a ton of ways to do that that I can't talk about, but loading at loading on boot gives us the best shot at doing it. So we have kept you for a long period of time. I could still talk. I, I, I could talk to you for like another five hours, but um, the life life must go go on. I uh, Ver, like Veritas one peg. Why don't you throw if you have anything you want to you want to ask, go ahead and then Phil like if there's anything that you just like we haven't covered. That's like you want to clear up about anti-cheat stuff this is your chance uh have at it no I, i'm not gonna add anything uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I just wanna, like i don't want to like again i don't want to make it about like it's it's a resource problem it's expensive to solve you know like i you're you, you, like i said like the previous students i worked i got a massive jump start on it um and i'm not gonna like and uh, that was why we were able to get to the spot where we were, like where we could comfortably detect stuff and start focusing on other things and get the client secured to the level that we needed for anti-cheat to even start to have an impact. It's like a, a massive tiered problem. And I think some people under, under scope it, thinking it's like, just stop all cheating or something. It's so much larger than that. It affects everything. You got to make sure like the server has authority. You gotta, like, we had to get into the host anti-cheat game to make sure that we had a shot at detecting things that were trying to manipulate the client or were trying to read the screen or were trying to submit inputs. Like, we had to get in all that. Um, and then, and even still, like, there's still ways that players can eke out of, e eke value out of the one day they get to cheat. And so it's like, I, honestly, I think cheaters are always gonna cheat. And, like, we talked about where everything's going, but it, it honestly is going towards a place where we have to start to trust the hardware that plays the game. Similar to consoles, like, we have to start to... Like it's gonna be a game of trust, uh, to like often like gated, like um, joining rank, like joining specific, like competitive modes require these settings, you know, like joining the the upper echelon of play requires all of these settings, like joining tournaments requires even more, like it's the only thing that can like let us actually know for a fact that a person isn't cheating before they play, because otherwise we're basically just on a we're on like a day a two day delay to determine whether or not any particular user cheated we can't secure a tournament completely which means we're always vulnerable to like some person managing to get access to somebody else's account playing as them in a remote tournament and then just having their way cheating and just making a spectacle of it right so the only way you have a shot at like preventing those types of things is is you, I mean, the, the person in your ear is hardware at a station, but it's true. It's like we have to start to have the ability to trust the session. Like cheaters on LAN having their cheats in their in the mice, bringing the mice with like software loaded onto them. I think that was a CSGO thing back in the day. Yeah, it was. I mean, well, that's just a way to get their stuff into the machines they don't own. But yeah, that was that was a vector. I, um, yeah, and yeah, I'll also... I mean, you know, we, we talked a lot about hardware stuff, um, the hardware cheats, and I, I worked with, like, some of the best of the best. That's, like, why, like, you, I, I'm here because of, because, like, I happened to be the product lead for a while of one of the best anti-cheats or whatever, but, like, that was just a, a, a reflection of, like, how hard the, all the people on it worked. So sh I'm just going to shout out to, like, you know, I, I'll give the ones that have handles, but, like, GamerDoc, EverDocs, um, I'm sure you've you've heard of a couple of them in your DMs, but there was like and Riot K3O. Everybody like really put a lot of they they worked harder than like as hard as cheaters, and that was like the way we were able to push the envelope that way. Um, and I don't think some companies can afford it, so that's why you don't. That's why there ends up being a little bit of a delta. Um, anyway, I hope that was like three. I didn't. That wasn't well rehearsed, but there you go. There's three things. Oh, this, this has been amazing. I've got I've got yeah. one last one last question real quick. Sure. Um, does reporting suspicious players matter? A and B. Should should there be a stigma to reporting somebody you're suspicious of, even though there's a chance that they might be legitimate? Like, how do you feel about the the role of reporting suspicious players? um it's value like i it's super valuable it well like i said it's it's similar to, to anomaly detection and it allows us to like direct our like as anti-cheat engineers we can direct our focus towards the things that affect players the most uh, and also like you know there's a lot of noise i mean I, I will say that they're not that accurate but in the aggregate they can direct you towards problems um 
and like I've done I've done uh, pieces on like how accurate players are based on how long they've played the game and how highly rated they are, and we can trust certain reports more than others. And and once we get to the state where we can add, we can estimate the value of any particular report, and you can you can get there when you're resourced properly and you got like seven data scientists at your disposal, you can get to the point where you can you can eke. Uh, like you can prioritize reports based on who's making them um, or the demographic that's making them. And we, yeah, I've, I've been in those situations and it's, it's a, it's a, it's a massive uh, boon in those situations. It's a massive boon when you can do it, but it, it, there's a lot of noise and it takes work to use everything. There's no one, I hope that if I've, if I've rambled enough, I hope the one thing is like, there's no smoking gun. You need everything <laughs> and uh fewer resource to have everything. So when you're running lean, you got to like, take the take the the smallest wins like the the, the obvious things um, and this is the consistent thing that i've heard across the board of everyone i've talked to um you know the the cycle guys refer to the uh, cheese method of like having multiple layers and there's like holes in every single slice but you line them all up and eventually the That's the cheese is not going to get through you know through. i mean i think of it as in fences like you know there's like there's like making sure but i do I like sorry to show one more time for hardware at a station it is it is evolving into a like how much can you trust this machine and this person that's playing this game and i i think that's the only way it's going to be sustainable because I'll, I'll just say it's getting too expensive and anti-cheaters themselves are getting too expensive and i mean not, like it's not, it's it's not sustainable you can't keep attacking it as this like detection only problem yeah i, I do i do think that that's that timeline is limited because even even with all the resources at my disposal and i do think i had the most of them i was i was running out of things to like i was running out of ways to reply to, to, to reply at the speed necessary on only like only operating in post like mm, waiting yeah. for the crime to happen so like the only place to go at least in my perspective is the pre-crime division um or in this case the harbor at a station yeah well thank you so much guys um to yeah, find everybody cool. um we've got veritas of course you can find him on youtube and twitch uh one peg up in the top right uh you can find him on youtube and Twitch. i was bad about not putting names on here and uh, Phil, the only guy without a beard, um, you can find him on the dark web selling Tarkov cheats. Um, yep. 30, 30 <laughs> grand last time um, I, I heard. Uh, you can look him up. He's legit. Um, and I'm so glad to have uh, all of you guys on. I thought this was a great conversation. And um, yeah, I hope we kind of open the can of worms on this a little bit and let people talk about this in a more open way. And I, I really think it's empowering. I think knowledge is power. And uh, I hope things move forward for, for Tarkov, but just gaming in general. You know, it's in a rough spot right now with a lot of games with uh, cheating and i think um you know not talking about it i don't think is 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 gonna help so Dude, my brain is so full right now i'm just saying I'm, i couldn't i hope i hope you so can get full. a next time i'm sorry you had to dig at the bottom of the barrel just for me um <laughs> I, I, am glad, I am glad some of the stuff is getting out there <laughs> like a lot of a lot of it has to come a lot of this demand has to come from the players like because it has to be made known to studios that this is what they want so that i mean i this sounds kind of jerk but we got to be able to start to enforce some of this stuff to make because it like i said the the time that timeline's shrinking and um yeah so it's good that we're starting to have the conversation um i think it's important they, yeah good phil all right gentlemen Thank I'm going to go ahead and close it out. Thank you, guys. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your night. And uh, well, I'll, I'll talk to my chat a little bit, but uh, um, thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thanks, boys. See you.